What's up, buddy? My hey, friend. also, quick shout out to all the veterans out there. We're shooting this on a lovely Wednesday in Playa del Rey, California. But uh, God this bless you guys. Tomorrow. God bless you guys. All you guys. And girls. And ladies, and you know, from my dad was in the military, both grandpas, ton of uncles, and then my, although my family was in it, my favorite, favorite veterans and currently active, uh, Tim Kennedy, Tim Brian Kennedy. Stan. Tim Kennedy and Brian Stan. Couple one, two cutie pies. <laughs> Couple of one, two men. Shout out to Uber you. Uber men. Brian Stan and Tim Kennedy. Do you have a song for them? Maybe. God, I wish I did. Just a I red, white, know. and blue. Red, white, and blue. You guys have shoulders for days and jaws that could carve a trophy. Shoulders for days and jaws that could carve a trophy. Brian Stan looks like a comic book. So Tim does Kennedy, Tim Kennedy. You can sleep with my girl. I do not care. It's the red, white, and blue. You can take my girl. Tim Kennedy, take my girl. I'll videotape while I cry and crouch and do other stuff. We weren't in the cry service. We weren't in the service. Stuff. We're too big of pansies, but we appreciate the work. So the only thing we can do is give. Give you our girls, give you our girls, give you our girls. Yeah. While I jack off in the corner. Bro, bro, oh, I alluded to that. I God, alluded. Dang it. I, we were, I said that while we crouched nice in video and do other stuff. Day song, ah. And I just, dude, you had to, You had to talk about taking cock to hand. Well, well uh, red, white, and blue, baby. It is red, it's what white, we and blue. do. That's right. Um, Did you ever even think about being in the military? I thought about being in the Marines. I remember going out to the to Afghanistan to do stand up and I and I was seeing people that had been out there for 15 month tours, not seeing their kids or their wife, not getting laid because the military had a policy against mixing. And I think it's the With army. guys and girls. Oh yeah. And I was just like, "You know what? That is that's a serious sacrifice for real." Like you what? can keep that Hell shit. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, let's keep going. You're wearing you're fully decked out in a Humvee. Where the no threat, AC. the no AC, no and the threat of uh, IEDs, improvised explosive devices, was so high all the time, and it's just dealing with that stress on a daily basis, man. But they it's rely on each super other. Super intense, yeah. Man. The military, when you go to a war zone, at least from my very, very limited experience, what I liked the most was how it's all about everybody else but you. We've had a lot of uh, Marines, Navy SEALs, you name yeah. it. A lot of service, humble guys. Really, good it dudes. humbles you. Well, uh, just they're, they're they're a different uh, breed, I would say. Yeah, not yeah. not selfish. Yeah, it's true. It's like Andy Stump going. SEAL Team Six is not that big a deal. Y- yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. The guy's crazy. He was just on Rogan. I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm sure it's good. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, the guest today. The guest today, we got. I don't know Stevie. much about him. I, I usually Blue do a Eyes. lot of research. I usually yeah. do a lot of research, and you told me don't do any research. I want you to Stevie find Blue out Eyes, about it on the Stevie show. Stevie Blue I spent four years in federal pen, and we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about his experiences in the pen. And he's a comic now. Yep, and he's a funny comic. He's just starting out, but he's he's got a lot of talent, and he's a very smart guy. He can shred a guitar. He can kill a oh, guitar. Yeah? I've ne- I I watched him. His his girl sent me a um, video of him playing the guitar, and is he a it, was, looker? it was Eddie Van Halen. Is he a looker? He's got a, he's got beautiful blue eyes, and he's got a p- ace on him, and that's all I'm gonna tell know. you. I'll show you later, huh? Uh huh. Oh no. Uh, well, you guys are listening to us. Brian Callen and myself are on our way to Arizona for the Tempe Live Fighter and the Kid. That's right. Tempe shark Live. Shark Smile uh, Doll Eyes will be there. Yeah, I can't wait. Or is it doll You guys eyes are hanging smile? out until. Uh, I leave Saturday, Saturday morning. So I got to fly back to LA that morning. What morning? Do a two broke Saturday girls. morning? Yep, do a two broke girls. You leave Saturday? Kill. Wait. No, no, Friday morning. Ah. Uh, so I'm going to get on a 7 a.m. flight. Friday. Here's my schedule. Here's my schedule for the week. And so you want to be an actor. It's not that big a deal, but let's just go through it. Yeah, it's really not that much work. But uh, I got to, I got to, I fly in tonight, Arizona. Arizona, you do media press, in the morning. Me, press in the morning. We got our live show Thursday night. Very excited. Friday night, Friday morning, I fly to LA. I do a network run through for two broke girls. I get back on a plane, go back to Arizona. What time do you get back on Arizona? Land at six thirty. Friday night? Yeah. Well, oh, that's I'm, not bad. I'm gonna try to land earlier. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. So we'll see you Friday night. Yep. And then I got. Oh, two shows. you have shows. a show Friday night. I got two shows Friday night. I will be at one of the shows on Friday yes, night. You Maybe will. Um, my boy uh, Robbie Tebow is gonna be. You got to come to a show. Man. I'll be. The, 
No, no, I got Oops. a lot of new stuff. I want you to see it. Okay. And then I'll, I'll be, be at judge. that. I'll be at that show. And then um, Friday and Saturday yep. night. Then you have. A sh- then do you leave Saturday? S- no, nope, Sunday I got a show as well. So after that, I first thing in the morning, I'm back on Monday. Monday morning at what yeah. time? Monday morning. Oh, this is good news. Monday morning, I'll be there at 7.30. I'll land at 7.30, something crazy. I'll go do Two Broke Girls again, but You'll I'll be shoot done. It. You'll I'll shoot be Two done. Broke Girls? I'll be done uh, by probably 12, 1. So we can knock out a yes, show at 2? Yes, we can knock out a podcast, thank God. And then, um, he's, not, he's not here? Let me see. And then, uh, and then, and then, I, and then I do the Goldbergs. No, um, I'm sorry. Then I go right to Kingdom at night. I shoot Kingdom at night. On Monday night. Yep. And then Tuesday, I shoot bro- Two Broke Girls. And then Wednesday, Thursday, I do the Goldbergs. Friday, I fly to San Antonio to do the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. So I'm, I'm going to need Antonio. to find a replacement Friday, for the kid Saturday, on Wednesday, Sunday. huh? Uh, don't think so. I may be broken and we may be able to do it. Broken? By the way, I'm going to. I might be broken. I might, I might get off uh, for a little it's while a so we can do the podcast as well. I don't stop for anything, dude. It's a busy day. But you know what? I'm working as an actor. You are working. So guess what? And you want everyone Could to know. Could be so much worse. You're like, you're like the vegan. Yeah. You want, yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. you want everyone to know you're working. You ever met a vegan who didn't tell you they're a vegan? Well, I just, uh, you know. No, I get it, though. You're working Careful what you ask for, though. Yeah. You know? For Sheezy, Brian Keezy. Um, um, well, Stevie Blue Eyes is, uh, he goes, I'm down here. Do I need a key or some shit to use the elevator? Okay. Well, you know what? Stevie Blue Eyes is finally here. He's wearing an Onnit shirt. I'm not mad at the arms. I'm not mad at the Onnit shirt. Did you walk here? Or? <laughs> Good buddy Callan over there gave me some great directions. Dude, you got to go through me. Pa- <laughs> you got to go through <laughs> me, man. I was like, pull in, park next to the, you know, the elevator. I'm like, all right, park next to the elevator. I'm waiting. Big sign says elevator. I'm like, all right, come on. Let's go. 20 minutes goes by. Was he supposed to meet you there? Said, no, I said, said I said elevators down. here in the building, and I didn't. Oh, I wasn't clear. Oh, clear. This place is hard to get to, but it doesn't really matter. Not really. Yeah, he wasn't. He, it, he, wasn't he wasn't very impressed. He thought our studio was going to be a little bigger. Doesn't he listens to the podcast. Yeah, you know, we do have a. Uh, we did hire Evan the Beard and Fox hired a uh, interior designer to redo this thing. You know that? No. Yeah. But Step that's great. Why you didn't have one set this up in there? No, nah, I know it looks nice. <laughs> everything in here is fan Jesus. created. Everything. No, yeah. All mean, the artwork. We get a lot of cool fan work. So I want to get Stevie on because uh, he's got some colorful. He's had a colorful life. Stevie's twenty nine years old and has had uh, has done a lot of stuff so. in that time. And uh, it's it's an interesting thing because you start telling stories and they just get better and better. But the good thing is you can prove them all. That's yeah. what's crazy. How, so how old are you? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. How long did you spend? Yeah, so now let's go. Let's start from the beginning. Hold on before. So who canceled the calendar to hit up his sketchy felon friend <laughs> to, come on, to come on the podcast? We got a felon on. Guys, this is the fighter, the felon, and the kid. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware. Exactly. <laughs> Callan, Callan vouched for you. So, um, yeah, he's, yeah, you know, yeah. I think sometimes you got to have colorful people on. Stevie's a, a, you know, you're starting out with stand up. You're yep. doing well. Yep. You sent me some stuff. It's really funny. How long I think you, you got a lot stand of talent. Up? I, st- I first did stand up in 2011 while I was on trial for my federal case. And uh, so I did a few open mics and I was just in the comedy mindset when I went to prison. Mm. So I got to write. <laughs> that and makes kinda, sense. It's good. It, I mean, prison's like comedy college. Like really? When you can, if you can like break things down, like get in that mode, there's just endless material. And how everywhere. long were you in there for? Three and a half years. So that's a lot of time. A how many yeah. how many months do they give you? It's usually months, 60. right? Sixty. Yeah. Sixty months. Was, but then when I got out, I mean, I just started hitting open mics, hitting comedy like every. So when week, you as much but, as so when you were on trial, you thought about doing yeah, comedy. Yeah, I couldn't do any. I oh, I guess I always was in the comedy. Like I, it was one of those things. Like I have ex girlfriends who I was with in like middle school who found out I'm doing this now. I'm like, oh yeah, you Makes always sense. wanted to do it. Yeah. And I was just like, did I? And that's like, like Brennan being yeah. like Brent. We had this. M- this creative meeting yesterday coming up with ideas yeah. and Brennan is with me and a guy named Mitch Rouse who couldn't be more uh, like he's an uh, uh, an he's all-star he's an all-star yeah. he's like sketch a comedy, comedy. sketch mm-hmm. comedy slash improv all-star and what was funny is Brennan was you know you'd think that Brennan would take a back seat in that situation because me and Mitch are coming up with ideas but Brennan actually came up with three of the funniest ideas that turned yeah. out to be these great ideas and what I realized was that, in a way, his body pushed him towards sports, but his mind, mind has always right, yeah. been 
way more about presentation, performance, mm -hmm. uh, art, and art, he's artistic, you know? So maybe it's the same thing with it's you. The same but how the fuck did you fall into, like what got you into jail in the first place? T tell us your odyssey. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had a crazy, crazy life before that. Grew I mean, up where? Uh, I grew up in Boston. A suburb of Boston called North Andover, okay. which is like a really nice upper class town. It's like it makes no sense. Isn't that where that, Andover is that where Andover yeah, Academy where is? Phillips Academy, all Jeez. the presidents go to that school. Phillips Academy shit. is and I've been there many times and played yeah. sports there many times because I went to Northfield Mount Herman. Yep. And Phillips Andover is in many ways the best high school you can get into. Oh yeah. It, it, it's so I didn't get in. So you yeah, so you're from <laughs> so you're from this fancy nice area in Boston. Yeah. Continue. Yep. So if you really want to, do you want to get real back, like with the whole for sure stuff? And oh, this is crazy. Because this is where so bring it. <laughs> so I'm at well, Griff, 16, 17 years old. I'm in high school. Started doing steroids for the first time. I was really into bodybuilding. I was never into really team sports because I always got kicked off the team. Right, not because I was like an asshole or anything, but because like for grades and stuff like that. Because you know how in school, like yeah. they do that, like end of the semester, certain you know, make it, yeah, just certain <laughs> GPA. Because I always got in trouble in school, not like bad trouble, but I'd always be skipping classes, you know, being like a wise ass, like you know, the class clown type thing. Mm. And uh, so I was really into bodybuilding. I got into that because more of an individual thing. You couldn't throw me off my own gym team, you know. Sure, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> so I get into You're that. Your own coach. I start, I'm 16, 17 years old, and I uh, start doing steroids for the first time. Hey, that's good for you. Yeah, great for Makes you. Makes sense. This is back in, you know, 2002. I so think you're doing was. like DECA, yeah, Deanna Ball. Yeah, I was doing tests, DECA, Equipoise. I was on some shit. <laughs> 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 and, oh, Jesus Christ. And I start getting like big. I start, you know, it's working, obviously. And uh, one of the football coaches, I'm walking down the hallway with my arms out like this, like, because I think I'm all jacked. And the football coach goes, what are you doing? Put your fucking arms down. And I was like, I can't, bro. Fucking look. Here's some lats, son. I thought they were lats. I had these giant sized grapefruits under my arms, which my lymph nodes completely oh, swelled up. The coach grabs my arm. He goes, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, dude, brought me to the hospital immediately. They did an emergency biopsy, sliced me open. I have stage 5B Hodgkin's lymphoma. Damn. Late, one of the latest stages of the cancer they've ever found. And you just thought you were swelled up. I thought I was. Well, you were sweating, right? right? I was, but the thing was, I thought everything that was happening to me negative, I thought was from the steroids. Yeah. So I, in the middle of the night, I would wake up, be literally soaked in this weird smelling sweat, freezing cold, hot, like hot flashes. Giant things under my arms. I couldn't stay up during the day. I brought an oven timer to school, and I used to skip classes, go to my car, and have to sleep for a couple of classes Jesus, to make man. it through the day. And I just thought, I was just like, it's these fucking workouts. Yeah, at least I look good. <laughs> yeah. At least I look I good like, for the yeah, ladies. Yeah, because I'm killing it in the gym, you know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking like, meathead. Cancer. <laughs> fucking meathead. <laughs> man. And I was, cancer. And like, as long as I look swole, man, I don't care. <laughs> the doctor was literally like, if you waited three weeks, maybe a month, you would they would have just found you dead in your sleep. Damn. Like your body was just like shutting down. Shutting down. My body just started to shut down. So I started, you know, emergency chemotherapy, radiation, the whole fucking thing. And if anybody out there has anybody who's going through it or can't like just go hug them. Go give them a fucking hug. I bet it's a beast, dude, it man. Is, I can't imagine. It is a fucking beast. And it's like most other things where it's like ninety percent mental. You know, it's it's just this mental game that you got to play with yourself. Cause like being a body at the time, I was really into bodybuilding and literally just having to sit back and watch my body deteriorate. Up, yeah, and there's all nothing, your gains. Yeah, nothing. All those gains. All those <laughs> gains. Oh my yeah. fucking all gains. The fucking all the fucking gains. gains. Bro. There was nothing you can do, and that was like such a fucking like. It was terrible. And I'm like a vain, you know, I, I love. We all are, we're, buddy. We're all like that. Most you know? dudes are, yeah. Yeah, like really into looks and stuff. And I remember my doctor, like, when, because me and my doctor kind of had this weird little riff after a little while. Because first I was just like, listen, bro, like, I don't really care about my head. I can wear a hat if my hair falls out. I, what can I do? Because I don't want to lose my eyebrows, my eyelashes. Because that just looks fucking weird. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like really concerned about it. You know, I didn't give a shit about the physical things and all that. I didn't even ask questions about <laughs> any of that Did stuff. you think you were going to die, though? Oh, yeah, 100%. You did. I just, they were, well, this is where the thing with me and the doctor kind of got in. Because it all started, that was my first concern. I didn't care about like internal problems, any of that. I was like, I don't want to lose my fucking eyelashes or eyebrows. That was it. And he was like, don't worry. 
you're young. He's like, don't your hair might get thinner. That's it. Literally two weeks later, a couple uh, chemotherapy sessions. I was sleeping. And I'll never forget. I wake up. I look down at my pillow. And literally my eyebrows and eyelashes were on my pillow. Damn. Full head of hair still. And I, <laughs> I looked like the mask from Scream. Yeah. Remember that? I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just sure. fucking this white face. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so <laughs> it was at that point, me and the doctor, I, all of a sudden it was like everything he said. I was like, fuck this guy. I was like, you know, the one thing that he was like, don't worry, like assured me that said wasn't going to happen fucking happened. By the way, it's just so. interesting, though, that you're dying and yeah. you're worried about your eyelashes. That's, it. That's a 16-year-old well, meathead. Yeah, for real. <laughs> That's, yeah. you know. That's it. That's so then you call the doc. You're like, dude, eyebrows like, and yeah, eyelashes like, fell off. What the fuck, done. man? And he was just like, uh, you know, he just said some bullshit. Sure. Like, oh, yeah, it's not all, his all this fault. Skin. It's yeah. not his Yeah, yeah. yeah. He the time couldn't have done pissed, anything. Though. Yeah, no. It's probably do? me thinking about it yeah. so much that, like, I was dreaming, like, don't fall out, don't fall out. <laughs> they fucking yeah. fell out. But that caused, because they had me in all these pills. They had me in all this stuff. That was literally, they wanted to just keep me like zonked out. Like opiates? Yeah, like, op- I mean, dude, Kalanapins, sure. anti-anxiety stuff, opi- like all types of stuff just to kind of keep you along, like, so you're kind of there, kind of not, you're not, you're just blocked. Just numb. Just numb, so you, basically you're just like that, then you kind of just... That, you know, get you, through you it. Get, but like, not so they were really. giving you palliative care in a way. Yeah, because exactly. they assumed you were gonna die. They assumed I was gonna die, so they were just giving me all this medication. Did so they I tell could just you go. that? Did they ever? They s- didn't tell me, but they told stuff like that to my parents. Sixteen. Yeah, because yeah. I, I just. It to them? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but sometimes they're very. Some doctors. Are, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I literally would hear my parents on the phone like talking to people about stuff like that, and it didn't even bother me at the time. I was just kind of like, I don't know. I can't even explain it. I still don't even understand how I was kind of just like whatever. You know, Jesus. Well, it, was just a cata- of, it was a catastrophe. Yeah, right? it was just all this shit. And it, it was just like, so they started giving me all those pills. And then I just said, fuck it. And I was I was going doing worse and worse and worse, like steadily in the beginning. So I was doing everything they told me to do, taking all those pills and all this shit. And I just said, fuck it. I stopped taking all the pills. So I had like I just all I did is I really just smoked weed and I'd like eat good. But I wouldn't drink. I couldn't drink alcohol because, you know, I'm a kid. Yeah, your I'm a, liver's dude, shot. If I tried to drink, I'd be fucking deathly sick because you're in high school, you know. Kids want to still hang out with me. Everybody shaved their head. We went to prom that year. It was like a. That's cool. Yeah, man. it was a cool. It was Good a cool friends, thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But it was like this town thing. Like, I kind of had the support of the town. And I think that that's why I had to always just keep this, like, it doesn't bother me face because if they saw me break down, I think that they would have fucking yeah, you had to be flipped strong, out. Yeah, I had to be sure. like the one that was like, no, nah, we're good. I can understand you know? that. It was yeah. just this. So I stopped taking all the pills and I just start, you know, I was smoking a lot. But as I stopped taking the pills, I got better. Mm. It's it, Your body got stronger. My body got stronger. I got more confident in a way where i was kind of just like you know like, like you don't need that yeah stuff. i was like i don't need this shit and it's just kind of it kind of like woke me up a little bit to be like instead of this like zombie kind of like you know trooping around yeah. with really no purpose to where i was just like you know fuck this that's cool i was man. like i can fucking good for we you can do this but they uh but the chemo man it was so rough that like that's why today when i know people that are going through it. It's just like, it's such a beast. Cause you go in there and it's an IV bag. Cause you think chemo, at least I did before, you think it's this big process or some shit. And all it is, you sit in a chair like this with an IV bag and then the thing drips down and it takes about four to six hours for that bag to go out. And as the bag gets smaller and smaller, you feel worse and worse and worse and worse. And you, you just sit there and slow. Well, Cause it like, kills all it the cells. Ki- yeah. It just, huh. I would walk into the hospital and they'd have to bring me out in a wheelchair. Yeah. Jeez, man. That's have you, have you seen that movie uh, with Seth Rogen? I think it's 50, 50. Have you seen that mm-hmm. when he has cancer and they, they're, they're getting the chemo. I didn't and he's, see He's there that. with the old oh, wait, guys I did see that. and they're I smoking see that. weed and they're like, they, they're all older and they're all mm-hmm. smoking weed, getting their chemo. And then as he goes on, like he comes back and it was five and now it's three. Now it's three. Yeah. It's super sad. Dude, know what did it for me? Did you see funny people? Yep. Well, Hell so- yes. Bro, that fucked. I went to see funny people with this chick. I remember when it came out and I wasn't expecting that. And like, cause that whole scene where he goes into the office and he, they, he gets, pres- you know, diagnosed with the cancer. And then that feeling when you walk back out into the world and you feel like the world should kind of stop and come over to you. No one gives a like, fuck. Keeps, and the keeps wor- on, keeps birds on. keep chirping, people keep <laughs> going by, and you're just what like, a lesson. What a like, life. Come on, man. They nailed it in funny people. And 
I saw this chick. I broke down the movie theater, started fucking crying. That was, was a terrible she movie was like, to go to. I, she was. I didn't know it was about that. I don't even think. And she was just. She didn't even know I had cancer because I usually don't bring it up to chicks right away. It's kind of like the last line of defense <laughs> if everything else doesn't Is work. Is it? I see. <laughs> see, I feel. I feel like you'd be hey, good. No, like oh, you no. go up to some dime piece. Like, oh no! It how works. you doing, me? But I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Yeah, but, <laughs> got cancer. You got a couple days left. Yeah. But that's why I, I put. I feel the, like it's an easy shoot. No, it is. It, it, but I put the prison stuff first, which is right there. With really? Just the, dude, yes. Yes. Really? yes. Can I be honest with you? That's that yes. Boston Steve, shit. Steve Blue Eyes? Well, he's he, a looker. He takes it down. So you he have takes to. It down. You got, but you got a nice arsenal in your pocket yeah, because I depending on the girl, you can throw out, you know, cancer if she's like, ah, not really. Like, yeah, that's cool. I did some time, though. What? <laughs> and then I got a third that Brian just found out about too. You got a piece? Well, that too. So I, I thought you were gonna four. say that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I and I got the music thing too. You can sing. Yeah. Yeah, you can play the play guitar, guitar like, like fucking. Damn, Jimmy shit! Andrews, I might bro. date you. <laughs> shit. <laughs> sing cancer in prison. That's it's not bad, shit. right? <laughs> you do. You, yeah. He, he does very well in that department. Well, now, so so take us. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. Go yeah. Yeah. Let me. Let me. We're gonna sidetrack you along the way, but you just gotta keep on. You just gotta keep on keeping on. Keep on. But let me just tell you just one quick that like. The, you have like certain moments, you know, like in your life that like there's like, you know, there's a line before and after. There's For like sure. that type Some of thing. Star moments. Yeah, one of the times was when I was really late in chemotherapy. I was like, I don't, want, I don't know how many months in. It's a fucking blur. Seven, eight months in, but like it was one of the times where I came out of the. It was July. I remember this. I came out of the treatment in a wheelchair. Got thrown in my mother's car. AC was broken. All right. And I was in downtown Boston. We're sitting in traffic. It's tough. And it, dude, it's a thousand degrees. Windows are down. I'm just like, I already feel like death. And this is like, you know, even worse. And it was just all this shit was building up. And at that exact moment, I was sitting there. I just remember looking outside. And for the first time in my life throughout the whole thing, I thought, you know, like, fuck it. It might just be easier to kind of, this isn't worth doing. That you makes know, sense. This is no way to li you don't want to feel like this yeah and li this isn't life hey mom know? for sure get the ac yeah. going <laughs> hey, mom. but, but here's chicken noodle soup yeah. it's a hundred <laughs> degrees out what the fuck are we it, doing it's funny what yeah. air mom you make me want to die funny, what, yeah, <laughs> how about what, that what a yeah. lack of air conditioning dude, doing dude, i'd rather was, die than I, ride I, in this <laughs> car right now how about that mom i'd rather <laughs> die but that was the first time in my life in that whole time uh, that i ever honestly like Thought about Would giving say, up? Yeah, gave up. Like, I gave up in that moment. And that, in that exact moment, a fucking wasp flies in the window and stings me in my eyeball. <laughs> Get the fuck out the of fuck? here. Right hand. Get. See this red dot under yeah, my eye? Yeah, I do. Eye? That's from a, the beast. We're not talking about a little beast. We're talking about a, a fucking, as, as oh. Cal would say, a hornate. Uh, you're talking about a hornate. From heaven. It was a, a hornate giant, from heaven. And I was, so I was sitting there depressed. <laughs> and I, I said, you're right. Right. You're right. I, I was like, I'm ready. It's not a dove. <laughs> For you, it had to be a fucking wasp. I was like, I'm ready to go. And then, wha bam God was like, God damn it. Send the hornate. And then, zing, Oh God! Oh, and you're right. I got. It. I got. And that's. that's and, I got. And, <laughs> dude, that really, really hurts. Dude, what a what a shithead when wasp. I, uh, or awesome. And because uh, yeah, it just point. showed He's me that jump off the bridge. <laughs> no matter what point you're in, it can get worse. <laughs> it just can you always it can get, get worse. And now I have this fucking red dot on my face. To remind you, the man. rest of my life, every day I see it, and I say that's when I, I gave up. That's and I'll cool, never though. do that again. That's I will dope, never man. fucking do that That's again. Amazing, so then you man. obviously the cancer went into remission. Yeah, well, so this is how I got into the whole this adds to the little thing. So I'm as not mad as at I, this long story. As wow. I said, this is just the beginning, dude. <laughs> Bring it. As I said in the beginning, I stopped taking all the pills. I stopped taking everything they were prescribing me. So I had this fucking little stockpile of pills. And then everybody at the time, they knew I was smoking to help out with like my appetite, all that stuff. So it really does help with the nausea and all that. Okay. So I had a bunch of weed too. So I just started selling all the pills and all the weed that I had left over from the chemotherapy treatments and that whole thing. So that snowballed because I dropped out of high school at the time because I thought I was a junior in high school and I thought, you know, I was like, I'm not fucking staying if you're going to die, school. you're yeah, sure I was like, yeah. as fuck not going to social like, oh, studies. Yeah, social the studies, last man. thing I'd rather do <laughs> than go to social studies. Yeah. I'm dying. Huh? I'm, yeah. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> and Robert I, Moses, when he planned yeah. New York City on a map, yeah, eight-spirit statistics, <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, algebra, ah, 
How about sticking? How about I would have done some <laughs> horrible shit if I thought I had two years. Yeah, on. that's oh. why it, it was oh. just like I thought. You know, I was like, I'm out of school. So left. I got my GED though. So like, that's a good. I got that, but that's when the whole even thought of selling drugs and that type of lifestyle entered. Was well, because you had all these leftovers, all then these people were asking for it. Yeah, and then they're like, "Hey, well, I'll give you twenty, you know, twenty dollars yeah, for yeah." And I had a, cotton. Yeah, like, all right. exactly. And that's just where I got introduced into that world. Because everybody, I mean, it's high school. How much can you be? And you're involved? in a small town. And you're in a small town, exactly. So I, you know, started that. Just started, you know, a little snowball effect. So I started doing that. Then I moved out of my house. I moved to Lowell, Massachusetts, which is like. It's a pretty rough area, you know, cause, but it has UMass Lowell where a bunch of my friends were living. All so right. I moved in with them. I went to a community college because I got my GED and I was going there. But that's when stuff like I was just in this weird mindset where like all that shit with the cancer just happened. And like I still didn't really process it. Right. I still don't even think I have to this day. Yeah. But it was just kind of like in this fuck it mentality. You're, where, were, you, like, were you mad at society? Yeah, I was mad like. I was just mad. Sure. I wasn't like I wasn't like a violent kid. No. I've never been like that. But I was just like my relationship with my parents started kind of go downhill, and it was just like I was just mad. You know. I get that. It, it was just it was just, so I started. So I continued that behavior with selling drugs. Being a you rebel. Know, a being bit. a re exactly because I kind of was just like fuck it. Like you know, like who's looking? You know, you can't. What am I gonna do? Your contract with yeah. life had been broken. Exactly, a bit, right? and yeah. it's like. I forget where I heard it, but it describes it so well. They're like, once you're at death's door like that, like when you fucking stared the Grim Reaper in the face, basically, and then you get shoom, sucked back to real life, it's hard to try to go and like learn things from people who you know haven't been through shit. For sure. And yeah, trying, it's hard to. You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's trying interesting. To like, that's like, like being through a form of a war. Yeah, yeah. it's like. It's veterans all, talk about yeah, that. Like it, combat veterans. It's just like people would try to tell me things. I just be like, well, who the fuck are you to tell me anything? Like, what? Like, really? It was have you just, ever been stung in the eye by a Hornate while you're dying? Yeah. When, when, no you're, AC have in you the ever caravan? up on life yeah. in a thousand degree weather in Boston and then got stung in the eye by a Your mom offs you fucking hot noodle soup. If, I don't even think she ever knew I got stung by the wasp too, because I got stung by the wasp and I just kind of went like, "You wanted to die." Yeah, yeah I just kind of. You and I were just like, yeah, oh. I was just like, exactly. I was just like, "You fucking <laughs> serious?" Like it was just like a. I went and I'd get home and I'd go back in my room because the chemo would be on a Wednesday. I'd feel like death until about Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, I'd feel better. Yeah. But then you got to go back Wednesday, <laughs> that, yeah, it's and non, that's why it's mm. such a fucking mental. Yeah, because so, yeah. so then you get to call and you start slanging these drugs. Yeah, I start. But where were you more, getting more of the drugs though? It was because you ran out of your original supply. I ran, right? ran out of that when I moved to Lowell. I was kind of in that networking vibe where like I knew what I wanted. I knew how the business worked. Now I knew how much things should cost. Where like before I didn't really know what things. You know, you could walk into that blind, you get ripped off for sure. easily. So I just got because i was st started like like i didn't learn my lesson i started doing steroids like immediately after that was another <laughs> thing <laughs> like everyone was like you can't do you're gonna get canned i was like ah fuck it i'm fine yeah so i started doing steroids again hanging out at this gym and i was hanging out with all the older guys and they were the ones who kind of geared me into the direction further into the drugs and stuff like that so they took you down a deep they hole. took me down yeah is it one it guy there was a few. It was just like all this of them were known, drugs. Yeah, everybody back then. It, it was like a diff, kind of different in that. Is time. the steroid market and the drug market? It's all kind yeah, of it's underground. all connected. It's a dark world. Everything led to, like, everything was connected in a way. Like I started getting, you know, a few ounces of weed, and within two years, I was bringing trucks over the border of New York and Canada. With thousands of pounds. That really is. Who are you working? Who are you working? You, work? you had to have been. Quickly. You but, got connected uh, yeah. to mafia guys. Yeah. But how's it even happen? So you're you're basically, you know, hustling the uh, gram here, whatever. It, yeah. Those pills here, and then someone just like, "Hey man, you want to make real money?" It was. I just go to. And the And you're like, store. "Sure, yeah, man. You seem <laughs> trustworthy. <laughs> that sounds I, funny. I'll take one thousand freaking yeah, grams of coke. You want to make yeah. a thousand pounds? I would. My thing was, I'd always go to the source. It's like I knew that the stuff was coming from Canada, so we went up to Canada. You cut out the middleman. Yeah, I just kind of knew what was going on. I saw it. I knew the people involved. And I knew I could do it better and come up with better ways to do stuff. So that was always like my thing is I would like because when we were doing stuff from Canada, that's when it like I first ever started making good money. That's like when it started to happen. I went to Canada. I got somebody up there sending stuff back and forth. And then what happened was California opened up. And everybody and their mother started 
doing stuff in California because the Canada stuff wasn't as good as it was coming from California. When you say stuff, what are we talking about? Weed. Cocahina or just no, weed? No, it was just weed. Okay. That, that's, a, that's a whole other thing we'll get into. But the, uh, the stuff from California was better. So everybody started getting stuff from California, but he was getting <coughs> popped on the way here because they knew what was going on. So I came up with this idea where I had a grower in Northern California, and he'd send stuff back to New York and Boston in vanities from, like, Home Depot, like, low, you know, like a bathroom vanity. It's got the sink. Yeah. It's got the thing. Oh, yeah. So what we do is we get the vanity, and we would just get one with, like, granite and a bunch of fixtures and shit that weigh a lot. Because when you ship by ground, they don't scan it. They just do the weight. They weigh the they truck, just weigh right? It. Well, they have they, to weigh the stations. Just, yeah, they weigh the, like, if it goes through anything, they're going to take the box. The box says 300 pounds. Gotcha. They're going to put it on. They're not going to scan it. So we would take out the granite, the fixtures, and whatever we took out in weight, we would stuff back in there in weed. Makes so sense. if we took out 60 pounds of granite, we're sticking in 60 pounds of weed. Makes sense. And it would get shipped through, and we never had one taken. That's awesome. Never had one. Wow. Everybody I knew was getting stuff popped left, right, and nobody could figure out how it was done. And who how, came up with that idea? How many man operation was it? It was like five of us. You got to be able to trust people. It's the smaller the circle, the better. For sure. Because that's why people were getting these – shipping it and doing all this stuff shipping across the country and everybody's getting popped left and right but a lot do you did you have to deal with any of the drug cartel like from mexico or not you know, at that point colombia because like that's that? with the weed thing everybody was making money like i knew you know hell's angels mafia guys armenian guys russian guys the, everybody was happy in the weed thing sure and then what happened was after so the canada thing got fucked up because their weed wasn't as good california started getting fucked up because Everybody started doing it. And then all of a sudden, the rest of the country starts kind of getting soft on weed and, like, legalizing it. Yeah. Which I still, to this day, think is a fucking terrible idea. To legalize it? Terrible. You're a drug dealer. So, yeah, yeah you would. <laughs> well, you, would, that's, you used well, yeah. to be. That's, it's because, like, like I told Brian, and he mentioned it before, because weed isn't bad for you. All right? I think everybody's in agreement True, with yeah. that. True, yeah. Most people are, yeah. Weed keeps bad people busy. Where... <laughs> What do you mean? We, we were all, every, I'm saying all those organizations, all these people, we were all involved in this trade and it was just, you know, I getting us money. Saying. Now you legalize it, but aren't, legalize they're going to turn us. it to something else. Exactly. The money wasn't there. Mm. So every, there's a direct correlation between the legalization of marijuana and the opiate problem in America. 100%. Why is and that? That's so it's, interesting. It's not because people start doing weed and then they jump to opiates. It's because everybody who used to sell weed doesn't sell weed anymore they sell opiates so they're pushing opiates and all this other stuff on yep. these people because that's what i ended up going to prison for was oxycontin mm. and so i would have never in my life even touched i i didn't even know what they were but i would have never strayed from the path if this whole weed thing we well, had to adapt and make yeah, money that's and, and people say like what am i going to do go work at walmart or something like it, yeah, it, for when you're $8 when you an yeah. hour when you're <laughs> making freaking exactly. 100 we g's a week or whatever crazy money we had cars houses like all this shit and you're in these circles of people it's like anything else you get cl when you're doing especially when you're doing illegal stuff cuz you know how it is in like a locker room with guys for sure you're all very close you when you're doing stuff that you know you got fucking years of shit on each other that you know that could serious stuff that people legit die because they know certain things about people and it just forms this like tight knit circle and then it's so hard to get out of that and so like we started all of a sudden. That's why we moved the. Because everybody's got dirt on each other. Everybody's got dirt on each other, but you're close. Was it all a bunch of kind of Boston white kids who were doing this? Yeah, yeah, it was. How did a bunch of Boston white kids compete with like, like if I'm a Hell's Angel or if I'm a you know the Sonella Cartel or whatever, I'm just gonna rob you guys. But they a bunch of white Boston kids for sure just rob you. You sure, that's killing the goose. That, that's yeah, killing the goose. They though, right? needed people like us who to distribute. Knew, yeah, who to distribute. Because I knew all sense. these kids in colleges. I knew all these kids like that. Just like, rah, like you, know, you were making them money, off, making them tons of that money. That makes sense. That's why, like, they loved us. You would Did think, you have to have like, protection? Not really. It was like it. It was. It's it's like almost hard to explain looking back at it, but it's like everybody knew we were all like connected with each other, but there was never really any like sit downs that were like sketchy or anything like that it was just it was very like business structured in right. a way because when you're at the top not like at the street corners hustling and stuff when you're at the top of the game with that it's people it's normal smart you know it's smart a business guys. It's,
if they would have put their attention to something else, they'd be successful oh, yeah. in whatever they do. 100%. They just decide to say fuck it. And exactly. They, you know, they, I've had they music, have their PhD in the Music street. executives have told me the ones, that the, the rappers that, that make it huge, a lot of those guys learned the business when they had no other option when they were younger yeah. and they were they were selling drugs. Because you, you have to basically run a business dealing with the shadiest people possible and have it be secretive. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of it organization. Makes running, smart yeah, it makes running the whole thing like so. You're in a normal business because that's what I ended up doing. I ended up opening up a bunch of businesses and one became like crazy successful. Legally. And legally, yeah. But then I started using that business to transport yeah. my drugs. So the whole thing got wrapped up in this ball of just. I couldn't separate the two worlds. It was just this thing. I tried to get away. I tried to do something. I just it's couldn't. Tough. Too much I money. Couldn't. Yeah, it was just there's too much money there. And it's it's honestly not even the money. It's like the the it not even. It, the I juice? guess the, the power. Thrill? Yeah, the it's, thrill it's the, of the it? thrill. The juice. The juice. The power. The like respect you get from it because we because at the time I was living in Miami and I mean we were getting into places that like Miami Heat players weren't getting into sure. because they knew that we were in. It was just one of those things because I started. Did Brian ever tell you about the protein ice cream company and no, all that stuff? No. So it was, this was 2000. This was when we, after all the weed stuff was over, I was down in Miami. And I was dieting for a bodybuilding show then. I was fucking starving. I wanted ice cream so bad. But I couldn't have it, obviously. So I started Googling protein ice cream, you know, stuff that was healthy. Yeah, and it Super was, meathead yeah, Google. But yeah. there, was no, there was nothing. <laughs> super meathead Google. <laughs> there was nothing. <laughs> protein so, ice cream, no sugar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. No, no like, not out there. No, you meathead. Uh, but <laughs> Twinkie protein. Uh, well... Super meathead me, Google, sir. dude. I want super <laughs> meathead Google. They, so I start googling that, and there's nothing. So I go out, I buy a fucking ice cream maker for like two grand, and I'm in my kitchen chefing up all this shit. And I actually made a formula that was like 30 grams of protein, low in sugar. No sugar, carbs, just low. Two grams of sugar. Okay. And uh, but now I got it down now to like almost no sugar because awesome. that was before stevia and all that okay. shit. This was 2000. I don't even know eight, but uh. Yeah, so I, you know, from there, I just took it, had an ice cream manufacturer start to make it, had logos, you know, trademarked the whole thing, started selling it to nutrition stores and all this stuff up and down the East Coast, and it got pretty big. And it got to the point where I had these giant frozen trucks that were going from Miami up the East Coast to New York and Boston, and they came in these eight-ounce cups. And in the eight-ounce cups, you could eight fit ounces. A, yeah, you could fit a hundred oxycontin in the eight ounce Jesus. cups. Jesus. So that cup went from being worth a dollar fifty cents to being worth, you know, a hundred whatever that is now. For Damn. Thousands. So of where thousands would you put the oxycontin? We would put it in the front of the frozen truck because the trucks were big. It was like a tractor trailer truck, and the feds would never, nobody would ever raid a truck. Go ahead, keep uh, going. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay. you recording it? Mm -hmm. I know. But uh, yeah, you would never. Um, take a truck a frozen truck and go through the whole thing because there's so much money because it would pick up other things along the way yeah so the trucks filled with all these they other people's goods yeah they they there's no way it would ever get done <clears throat> so ours was way at the front stuffed with the shit and then it would go up to new york and boston never had a hitch never had anything wrong with it but i got on shark tank and on season two of Shark Tank, I was supposed to be. It was when Jersey Shore was huge, and that whole thing was going on. I was balls deep in Jersey yeah. Shore. I never Dude, missed an episode. I didn't. Need, I, if it's still all comes three on seasons, now, I bet you're never so into it. it. Oh, I loved it. You've never seen it. Never seen you it. You never saw oh, Jersey fuck. Shore. But I was supposed to be like the Jersey Shore esque type dude. You know what I mean? They're gonna have me 100%. on the show. Hundred percent. Oh, were protein. you supposed to be on the show? I was on season two for the protein ice cream. What? And so I get on Shark Tank. We, I get everything set up. I'm going out to film the pot, like the whole thing. Mark Cuban's on the panel. We already had talks and all this stuff. And fucking all of a sudden, they just cut off all contacts with me. Pew, gone. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? I was supposed to be out there on a Thursday. This is a Wednesday and nobody's answering my calls. Because when you go on a show like that, you have to have like all these pre, you know, things. For sure, you, yeah. You gotta have a script because you go out there. That's actually where I first ever thought I could do stand-up because the writers from NBC would send us a script for like 30 seconds to do the pitch and I'd redo the whole thing and make it funny. Do it yourself, And yeah. they were like, do you, are you a stand-up comedian? Like, this is fucking hilarious. I was like, yeah. no, but that's where it first got in my head. But so we had a, two, three weeks we were doing this back and forth, hours a day on the phone and all of a sudden nobody would answer my fucking call when I'm about to leave the next day to go do the final episode. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And they found out somehow through the powers of all the people at NBC, whatever, the executives, that I had ties with organized crime. 
protein cream was started from uh, illicit drug proceeds. Yeah, that's frowned upon, my and man. I had but you pending, hadn't been under investigation, had you? I, ha I had a pending federal indictment coming down And on you me. knew this? No. I didn't Ooh. even know this. Shit. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't. They didn't say anything about the indictment yet, but they it literally within two weeks, I get the knock on my door as I'm f coming home from the gym, and it's fucking FBI, DEA, everybody's there. I'm just like, oh shit. They handcuffed you? No, didn't handcuff me. <laughs> That's just, when you get indicted. It's not like because it's, it's like the it, movies. Yeah, it's not like the movies. They got all the guys there, and they know they've been watching me for three years. <laughs> They have three years of <laughs> they shit. Know they know everything about you. They know everything. They come up to me as guys in street clothes, and then there was two guys who I could tell. I, they wouldn't say who was FBI, who was DEA, but it was just they were just like, "What's up, Mr. Pierce?" Like fucking talk. And I was just like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "How?" And I remember I was like, "How long you guys been watching me?" And the guy smiled. He goes, "A long time." And Damn. I was like, Ooh. I bet that's a fun this, job. Yeah. They're probably like, Damn. look at this dude. Yeah. Damn. Look at this meathead. Bro, when I got in the thing, they had a file. It was probably three feet long. This box with lined with hundreds of files. They had every conversation I've had in three years on this one phone of mine. Oh, and Jesus! And ninety-eight percent were just shit because I had other phones. We had satellite phones. Dick we pics had fucking, and shit. Yeah, like, well, here he goes, another I dick had, pic. Yeah. Jimmy, check this one out. He's they getting said, better though. He's getting a lot better. <laughs> they even they even said to me they were like, dude, we used to like joke about it in the office and be like, fucking blue eyes. Look at this new chick he's with. He I bet it, like, it's probably dude, it's probably dude, kind of fun. Yeah, dude, like, look at blue yeah. eyes. Look at this hot ass chick <laughs> yeah, he got yeah, the other they night. They were like, cause they were following me all over the country. Because I was, you know, bouncing around Vegas, New York, and, you're, and like, it's fun. Dude, it's probably fun it's to fun follow. Is, like, dude, they were. I was like their little thing where they have like, you know, different cases they're working, and they bounce back and forth. And whenever it was my turn, like it was time for the Blue Eyes case, they're like, "Oh, let's see, let's fucking go." It was like <laughs> this little joke in the office. Like, I bet it's was, fun as yeah, fuck. Yeah, but, like, but so, 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 how much money were you handling at one time? How much money I mean, were you were, making? It was a lot of fucking money, man. I mean, I was a millionaire many times. Did just you pay not, taxes or no? Uh, just I mean, keep, just enough. I did on I did that stuff with like the protein cream stuff. I had a big credit line with that, and like that, I didn't really do anything too bad in that thing. But I had I got hit with a racketeering charge because I started protein cream with uh, drug proceeds. That's where it all came in. Oh, so wow. it's not like they they call that they'll wrap in like extortion, racketeering, loan shock. They just lump it all into like anything you do with money. From illicit drugs. Because they're proceeds. thinking you're just doing yeah, it cause they for just, the drugs. Yeah. It's all these things, which I think, honestly, it's like I got more time for that. <clears throat> but in my head, it's like it was like a good thing that I did. Like, kind of. Kind of. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, well, kind of. Like, kind of in a weird I was kind of like, trying to get back. <laughs> you don't mind going to ch 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 yeah. jail. So, then, well, so, that, so then you go to trial? Yeah, then it's federal prison's crazy. I'm prison, well, that is too. But federal court's kind of crazy, where it's it's all plea deals. Like they catch you for you know this much, and then like they'll catch you for that, and then they'll give you a plea deal for this. You know, because well, like, you're a small fish, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm they, not I'm not trying to clown you, but yeah. in the grand scheme of things, you're, they oh, want to yeah. get where you're getting it. From. Yeah, they, well, they, they want to get the big boys. They wanted to figure it out because my um, ultimate charge was conspiracy to violate drug laws because they couldn't figure out how the hell I was getting this shit all around and doing all this stuff. Because they want you were dealing with big time people. Yeah, because I was dealing with you know like real guys, like you know real gangsters, real gangsters, You're talking like mafia, yeah, stuff. like ma like all types. Of that mind. still oh, goes on even oh, today. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's really yeah. they're oh, yeah. still well, when you're dealing it's, with it's those big time guys. When yeah. you're dealing, which I want to get into later, but when yeah. you're dealing with those big time guys on the outside, yeah, you're always aware that there's very clear cut rules, right? Oh yeah, yeah. for how to behave. Yeah. And like, the, I was always conscious about what I was doing and what the penalties would be, because I wasn't doing. St I knew that I was never looking at like a forty year sentence or something like that, because that's That'd how be the worst. They come at you uh. and they'll be like, "You're gonna do twenty years, blah, 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 trying to get you to cooperate." To but like, I knew in my head. I was like, I know they don't have me with anything, and it's five years at the most. Why? Because why? Because it be, be, but but why didn't they have you? Because you never handled the drugs. Yeah, it was or? like they never had any controlled buys. They never had any like things from me because they were just watching and trying to figure out how the hell this shit was going. Were, on. were you good fella style? Where uh, did you have a girlfriend throughout this? Oh yeah, I had, I had a couple. Yeah, I yeah. And when they asked what you did, were you like uh, construction? Yeah, no, nah, they knew. Or you just said yeah, the ice I, they, cream. They, they, knew. they you yeah, told they, them everything. They knew about. Yeah, they knew what was going on. Oh wow. Yeah, I was I was kind of like. It, it, I, it's not that I was proud of it, but it was like, you can't fucking 
hide it. Like that good, the good fella stuff you probably could back then when it's there's no now cell phones. And it's like, yeah. what, are, what am I gonna say? Were you <laughs> you in know? suits and shit all the time? No, no, no. I was just like, I mean, dude, I was in bedazzled shirts and fucking you know, <laughs> Jersey Shore <laughs> yeah, style, you know son. I was back then. I was, <laughs> I was fucking had a blowout and a bedazzled <laughs> fucking. <laughs> like, look at this fucking guy, <laughs> steroided out, shaved yeah, up. Right up. That's and, Jersey Shore. Uh, so then they they get you. You go to trial. Yeah. And that's just basically, it's just a hurry up and wait game where they take, they took all my cars, they took a ton of my money. But you're still in the free world. You're yeah, not in jail. I yet. was out. I had a hundred thousand dollar bail. I got out, and uh, yeah, you just hard. It's like they'll push these. Sent- they just fuck with you. Like they'll tell you, you'll have a court date say on a Friday, and they'll be like, listen, you got to be prepared to go that day. Like they might take you into custody, not let you back out, all this shit. So the whole week you're getting ready. You're like, fuck, here we go, getting everything ready. Friday comes. Oh, they pushed it back four months. Fuck, and you're just man. like, are you fucking kidding me? So it was literally a year of this shit went on. Did you think about going to another country? No, not really. All right. I don't even know. Well, what didn't the they hell like I was you? Didn't you? Didn't they let, like? That's what was funny about one thing is I had FBI DEA guys literally like break procedure, like contacting me, not trying to get me to cooperate, not trying to get anything from me. They were just like, I fucking hate this. They're just like, this is just. We know that you, if you have your right mindset, if you can concentrate on, you know, productive things, you could do anything. Sure. They're like, please don't. Because I knew I was going away. It wasn't a fucking like, oh, I might beat it. Like, yeah. no, you don't beat federal cases. They don't come and see you until they have enough on you to send you to prison. So you don't beat they, federal cases. You're doing time. Not be, yeah, you, yeah. You, nobody goes to federal court and wins and leaves. It's was, not it, like, was it just you with the whole operation? You, yeah, you there was five guys? Yeah, there was four of us four of in my indictment, I think, of them. Did you, ha- did you hire a really good lawyer? Well, that's another thing with federal cases. If you know you're going to take the plea deal... Which is usually, so say they catch you, like I said, they catch you with 100 things, they're going to say plead guilty to 50. And then if you say no, they're going to roast you for 200 things. Sure. So I, I've never even in all these years, like I'd go even in prison, like I met people who they call it blowing trial if you blow trial. And that means you don't take the plea deal and you go to trial. And I, like guys who they offered them nine years, they're doing 15 now. Wow. Guys offered three, they're doing 10. Damn. And it's just like you do Ain't not. They give you the plea deal and you just fucking sign it. There's nothing your lawyer. So I had a public defender federal. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, I, that I money, went to the, the guy because, you, you know, there's certain organizations have certain lawyers that are like the beast lawyers that sure. you want. I went to him and he oh, was so, like, so your criminal contacts provided. Oh you yeah. Money. Yeah. So I went to him, the big dude. And he was just like, bro, like I could roast you right now and say that he's like, I can't do anything that just take the plea deal. He's and like, the plea well, yeah. deal was five years. Yeah. The plea deal was for 60 months. So then after, you know, you had good time, you had halfway house, you know, I knew it was going to be like a three year ordeal. So it was just so like, first night in prison. Yeah. How's that? So, Look at me. I look like fucking Ellen DeGeneres on steroids. So. <laughs> for, yeah, you. They, they were eyeing you up for sure. No, it was just like, so when I first got there, that's the thing. It's just because you don't know. It's the fucking, you know, it's the unknown. You see the movie. Yeah, you see the movie and like it's federal. So some people are like federal's terrible. Federal's the bad. Like it's just you don't, nobody fucking knows. And even prisons vary from prison to prison. So You're like, prison in Boston. No, they, I got sent to Fort Dix prison. Fort Dix. Yeah, how about that, that name? That's a famous uh, yeah, prison. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the largest federal prison in the country. And it's where? where is Southern it? New Jersey. Gotcha. Because there are no federal prisons. There's one federal prison in uh, New England. Well, there's two now, but they're they're kind of new, and a lot of people don't get sent there from new. They try to send you away to even fuck with you even more. That's like one thing they do. They don't want it to be a nice, you know, easy. Yeah, oh, I'm getting horrible. a bunch of visits. Yeah. Like they send, and even me, I think I was 500, 600 miles from Boston, and that's like kind of close because a couple of my co defendants got shipped like way up in upstate New York, Pennsylvania. Did like, you get the most time? No, uh, we all almost got almost the same thing. All right, it was about that. A couple guys. I had two co defendants actually that. One committed suicide, and then the other one was a sketchy thing. Suicide so in prison? No, before on trial. Damn. I had two, yeah, I had two co-defendants both not make it. Wow. And it was just like another... Another fucking, guy got killed? Yeah. So so first night in prison, explain that to us. It's, it's like the whole prison thing. Like, I get there, and 
you know, it's fucking prison. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, like, you're like, you get in. I certainly don't. Yeah, so. and, like, I just didn't know what to I knew what to expect, kind of, so I get there. And I, at the time, I was juiced up. Like, I'm, like, 170 yeah, now. I'd, I'd be juiced Back up, then, too, going to prison, like, man. I was, like. I'd be hitting mitts, yeah, juiced up. I was, like, two, 205, maybe. Just, like, bro, like not trying to do card, like, not trying to look good. I was just trying to get bulky. You don't look too good. Yeah, I was just, just trying to get The homie's going to run bulky. a train on you. yeah. And so I get there, and I had a shaved head, a goatee. I was just trying to look rough as shit, as rough as I could. And I remember just, like, kind of just, you know, you first get in, it's fucking gate closes. They're walking you to where the, you know, the normal areas and shit. And, like, I was alone for the first, like, you know, hour. And a guy came up to me, and he was just like, you know, you need to... You need to relax a little bit. You got some time to do, son. Because <laughs> I was just kind of guy. older guy. Because I was you just, just kind of like, swelled up. I was just like, and I was like, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> then, probably right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, so I, cause you know what you expect. Everybody says the same thing. Oh, you got to go punch the fucking biggest guy in the face to get respect. Yeah. All that shit. No, like not are you really? fucking not. Like what? There were some dudes in there. Monsters! I've shown Brian pictures of some of my buddies in there. Like giants. I'm talking like I was seven feet tall. Yeah, my my boy, like good friend of mine, still legit. He's from Camden, seven feet tall, about four hundred pounds. This like guy, big or fat? Big, big. I'm talking. And he's in there for what? Shit. He got Being twenty big? years because the I don't know if you're familiar with the crack laws. How you get caught? Yeah, with like crack, crack laws. Yeah, the yeah. crack fucks people. The man. fuck, the dude. He got drug. smashed twenty years. Barely had a couple. Can, but he grew up in Camden. It's a rough, rough area. Camden, but he was. New Jersey, yeah. He got twenty, I think twenty two years. No one's fucking with and him, dude. No, but awesome guy, like one of the most, the smartest, most articulate, like awesome people I've ever met in my life. Now, like, still talk did, to him. Did you have to pick a, a side? Like, is it Aryan Nation, Blacks, what Mexicans? Is, it's separated by race, but it's not racist. It's separated by race because that's your kind of governing group, where like every race has what they call a shot caller, which is the you know, the leader of sure. the group. Shock, and then shock caller? Shot. Shot, shot caller. Shot yeah, caller. Shot and what happens is every Sunday, all the shot callers from the different groups, they'd all meet up together that and kind of nice. discuss things, see what's going on. Because if I'm being an asshole, they want to just keep everything normal. So they'll say, hey, listen, they'll tell the shot caller from the white guys, you, you know, your boy Steve's fucking doing this, tell him to stop doing this. And it's like to try to just keep the it's place. It's kind of organized. It's organized. Because it's at a place like Fort Dix, you're talking as the biggest federal prison in the country. There's 5,000 inmates. Jesus. And there's not many correctional officers. There's really not at all. Like, you've had times in our unit, there'd be 300, 325 of us in a unit and one correctional officer. Yeah, they say the prisoners run yeah, the prison. Yeah, they run every... And everybody knows they run the prison. So it's Damn. like... They're just it's so like like you would think like oh they don't want these meetings going on and stuff they're like yo get to that fucking meeting because it keeps the peace because yeah, you guys talk peace. about it because we'd interesting. all we'd all be cool like because that's what happens when you first get there like back to that like a white guy comes up to me, my boy Bob now but at the time you know it's just some big ass Bob white was dude to yeah I was dick. just like God he came up to me and they give you the rundown you got two weeks to get your paperwork and which is your sentence computation sheet your PSI all this stuff that you can legally have because you can say I'm trying to fight or appeal my case. But in those documents, it tells if you cooperated, it tells if, you know, you did anything like that. Sure. So they can, A, see your charge to make sure you're not a child molester and anything like that. If you're a child molester, you, you're pretty fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bad place no to one be. Likes what do they do to you? A, I mean, you don't let you they killed yourself. a few of them while I was there. They for did? Sure. Killed a, and every, for every, you know, they killed a few. And then for every one of those, there was probably a hundred that they beat to a fucking inch of their life. Yeah, they don't play they that. They don't fucking so play did, that did you, So you had a roommate. Yeah, well, yeah, so my boy, yeah, he's still there now, but like, uh, so I get there, my boy's this Haitian dude, his name's Control. Control? Control, That's yeah. awesome. Dude, he's the, <laughs> but his name is Control. Control, and, but I'm talking Control like. Control and Stevie Blue Eyes. It was, I, I'll show you pictures after. <laughs> Sounds like awesome. <laughs> he's great yeah. nickname. TV, TV show, oh yeah, great, well, I want to hear but, some of the nicknames. But he fucking. Control. I'm talking about, I've told Brian this many times, the only times I ever cried in prison were laying in the cell with him, laughing so hard because he was so fucking Control funny. Controls? Controls the funniest. Bro, you dude. make me want to go to prison. It's, I didn't even tell you about the flag football and all that shit yet. But <laughs> like, I'm so down for flag football. <laughs> like, I got control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll take the giant fucking seven foot guy. God the giant damn. seven foot. Let me tell you this quick story. There's weights there. So, I mean, literally looks like Muscle Beach with a little roof on it, so you can lift when it's like the out. longest yard. Yeah, it's it's like it's like that, but it had a little roof, so even in rain, you could still go outside and lift. There was this one day. There was this 
kid out there being loud, deadlifting. I think it was 405 and just fucking rah, grunting. Just grunting. My boy, the seven foot tall dude, was like, man, shut the fuck up. He walks over, grabs the 405, one handed, grunt, starts repping deadlifts, so one handed the fuck up. with 405s. That's Damn. how fucking beastly Beast is. this dude. I mean, is. when's he out? He's shit, out I'll, nine years. We need to get this guy yeah. in front of some scouts. Um, dude, but uh, what was I talking about before? Yeah, so control. So I'm in the cell with him. <clears throat> and he's still this day. I mean, I talked to him earlier today. I mean, we talk three, four, five times a week still. Damn. And he's like, I'd, I'd fucking do anything for him. How long's he in for? He's got another, I think, nine years okay. left. Okay. A little bit of time. Yeah, Where are housing people? Yeah. Him. Do you feel, that, but th- didn't you say that you, the one thing you don't want to be in there is not only a child molester, but somebody who cooperated with the feds yeah right? who ratted other they're, people out they're, oh snitches they're get lumped stitches. in the same spot where and it's even like <laughs> snitches get stitches you never heard that <laughs> yeah but it's just cracks from the out. street man it, it's I'm like street. <laughs> you are street bro you're street i'm all street you, go. you see the camera you get uh yeah you, it's it's just not i mean especially <laughs> the child molesters like they keep them around as like an insurance policy basically because like i said you get in there you get your two weeks everybody knows your charge so they know if you're good or not. How and do they know you're charged? Like, because that in that paperwork, it says... Can't you keep it a secret from people? No, because they come up to you and say, you have two weeks to get this paperwork in. If not, you're in trouble. Oh, That's so they want to see what you Oh, yeah, did. you have to show that. You have to show the people. And then once you're cleared, it's like they have a little party for you. Like, they threw a little fucking got snacks and all this type of shit. Oh, Steve's good. Like, and all so, so how did... Snacks. <laughs> here, here, bro, here's some Twinkies. <laughs> Steve's some protein good, yeah. Twinkies, you meet, Steve's meathead. Steve's good. <laughs> Steve's good. Hey, so this is what I want to know. So were the yeah. white guys, did they bring you over? Like, everyone, this is Steve. Yeah, and then it got... Exact, well, and they're like, hey, a new guy. That's what it's like. It's basically like that. You just... But you're, you're with these people 20. 24 7 you know you can have the best friend in the world but you go home you go you're with these people gets old. day in day out through ups through downs someone's having trouble at home you're talking about it all this stuff and everybody whether you're black hispanic white whatever mexican you all have this in common right now you're in this shitty place you're all in a spot you don't want to be all of a sudden everybody can relate to each other it's, kind of a, it's a special bond yeah everybody has this bond and that's why, like, the, I, some of my best friends are some of the black guys. Like, w- the whites and blacks, they got along fine. Never an issue. The Mexicans were the ones who were just kind of fucking crazy. Because they were different groups of Mexicans. And they weren't Mexicans from, like, L.A. They're Mexicans from, like, Mexico City, you know, Guatemala. They're, like, cartel-type, cartel like, pice, like, all these different Mexican groups within the Mexicans that don't like each other. That wow. None of us could figure out what the hell they were. Barely any of them spoke English. So it was more like, a, all right, I don't care. You can speak English. I can. All right, we're cool. And let's let these Mexicans fucking do whatever the For fuck sure. they're doing because we can't even, we don't even know what's going on. Then they'd, they'd have people, but they'd have their own kind of group within the Mexicans that we couldn't even really get to know because there was so much shit going on. So it was just like you were friends with one of the the cartel. Hit yeah, men, right? one of my boy, the student Nitro. <clears throat> Nitro, <laughs> and he had natural a, Nitro. He Nitro. had a uh, yeah scorpion on his trigger finger, tattooed on his trigger finger, like fucking like a stinger. Like uh, he was a serious dude, but really? he was like funny. Like it, it was hard, like because I knew you the realize your best things. friends are terrible yeah. people, <laughs> That's correct? Like, it was hard. Nah, man, Nitro yeah. was cool, bro. Nitro well, he's cool. a hit, man. But in a and way, when there's nothing to fight for, yeah. In a way, when you're when when the rules are so clear cut, and, it, and it's kind of a neutral space. Yeah, it's, it's right. So if it's you're like, not a rat or a child molester, you you it's accept because it's not many like rape federal crimes and stuff like that. So it's real cut and dry. It's like. Rapists don't do well either. Do yeah, they. they I, th- I don't even know if there were any there because to get charged with federal rape, I don't even know how the hell yeah, you do that. Unless you That's carry somebody super, super rape. Like, you can super if you rape. take somebody yeah. over state lines. State lines and rape them at a post office yeah. or something. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Rape them at the Capitol building. You rape them on a bunch of cash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You rape them on stamps or something. And <laughs> it's real, like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's fucking crazy. It's how. A good way to, like, that I think of it is, like, you know how you think of prison right now? It's this thing that's there that you know it's there, but you don't really understand yeah. how it works. When you're in there and you get institutionalized, that's how you think of the outside world. You think, you know the world's there, it's okay, but you're not in it. You're not so thinking what do you about care? it, really. What yeah. the fuck's going on out yeah. there? This is your world. Yeah. So it becomes this 
fight that like I hated getting visits. Getting visits was the worst fucking thing. Remind you of what's going on. Because you go back, they call it the visit hangover. And I not, my first visit, I'm getting all excited. Everyone's like, bro, you fucking wait till you get back. And you get. And I was like, what are you talking about? Go out to the visit, new smells. You see people. It's like, whoa, brighter colors. Everything in there is, you know, bleak. It's yeah. not like there's any, you know, stylist or anything. And so you're in this room and, like, it's like sensory overload. You're just like, whoa. Then you get phew, sucked back into the prison. And I was, like... So depressed. I bet, man. The, like, I'm because that was your world. Like, yeah, you're just like, I just stopped. I was like, don't nobody visit me. You gotta, <laughs> like, you gotta just, peek into the rainbow. Yeah, gotta, yeah. It's like, man, it, it makes time go by so much slower. So Did much you get slower. Conjugal visits? No, they don't have that in federal prison. No, but the visits, they're not that bad. It wasn't like a through a glass or anything like that. It looks like an airport. And where all the seats are connected to each other, and when you walk in, you can hug and kiss for a second. Then well, you're that's just cool. And they separate. Yeah, then you can sit next to them and hold their hand, and you know stuff like that. So it's not like you're. It's tough though. It, yeah, I mean, it, but it sucks because like you, you're touching, you have no human contact. You that's know, you're tough, not. Man. I didn't hug anybody for years. You know what I mean? Like you don't have any of that. For sure. And all of a sudden, you get it, and your mind's just kind of like, "What the fuck is going on?" Were there any dudes who dressed up as girls that would give yeah. people massages and blowjobs? <laughs> massages. <laughs> yeah. Was, In prison, that'd be nice, yeah, though. Because a believe. Massage. Oh yeah. Believe it Shot or not, take one right now. there was a group of like there was a shot caller for the gay guys. There's a ton of gay dudes in prison. Yeah. A ton. And it's believe like it or not, a lot of them. Are like solid guys. They're in there for drug stuff like that. They didn't rat on people, so sure. like you can't, you know, you know. You there are a lot of tough things yeah, that th happen. It's just like like, fucking guys. Serious, like the shot caller for the gay dudes. His name was Harry Potter. I don't know his real Harry name. Potter? Harry Potter was the shot I'd love caller. to see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glasses on, but he was doing 15 years or something. He he was he had like a serious case, didn't rat on. Like he was like a you know. Did a they did, dude. did they know like not to cross the line? Like yeah, you're not going like, up to Nitro trying to suck his dick. Yeah, yeah. They like they had their own little thing because it was like they were all in relationships with each with other. Each other. It was like dude, because that's why I have a thing. It's like. Prison for gay guys is like heaven for Muslims. For sure. It's like untapped virgin ass fucking. They're Everywhere. just in these little groups that they 100%. like. And I'd be listening to them like in arguments. Like I'd get in with my girl, these two guys. Like it would just be this whole fucking giant thing of like these groups of gay dudes so all gay guys, each other. But, they, but gay guys do get, the, the, would the shot collar kind of auction them off? No, like it, if you were gay, like there was enough gay shit going on. Like if you were gay, you could just be gay. Yeah. If you want to fuck guys, you could just go get a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could know? just go up to yeah. a dude and you, be like, you could, like and they're down. Yeah. Like it, it's it's none of that like prison rapey type thing. Cause who like, does get raped in prison? Is I, that I never knew of anybody who got raped while I was there. Really? I knew a gay guys like hooking up and shit. Like they'd sneak off and like yeah. do stuff. But like, like straight dudes would hook up with gay guys. Yeah, there's stuff like that going on, and it was just weird because there's some guys we call them gay until parole day, and they'd only be gay when they were in prison, and then they'd have like families and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they get out like, man, that shit was gay. Yeah, they're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. See you, gay me. boys. I don't know. I, I might just... have been queer for a year, but yeah, I'm really <laughs> good now. yeah, I, I've never been. Yeah, it's just not. Gonna was there, do was it there any? Me. Did you see any hits or anything like that, or did your yeah. group talk about hits? Yeah, on there was like some crazy shit. Because I remember one morning I woke up and I remember it like it was like four in the morning and it just smelled like somebody had a sack of pennies in front of my face, and it was just a dick. <laughs> That's weird. A no, sack of pennies? It smelled like pennies because like it's there was fucking a ton of blood in the hall. Oh, it's the iron. I, the iron. iron and the blood. I remember waking up and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I looked out in the hallway because I was on the top bunk and I could see the hallway down there and it was like four in the morning i was like out of it and i remember just thinking like why the fuck would they paint the hallway black it's gonna <laughs> collect dust it's like all this it's gonna shit it's collect dust <laughs> it's a then, bad look and then i fall back asleep kinda and then i wake up again and we're on lockdown nobody can fucking move for days and then it fucking connects that oh shit somebody got stabbed up killed right there but i didn't even hear i was just like in La La Land. It isn't, and isn't in, in prison too. There's a ton of drugs, ton of steroids. Oh, yeah. Nonstop, right? The first day I was in there. So I was in prison basically for like, you know, Oxycontin and like racketeering, like gambling type shit. And my first day in there, I saw Oxycontin, got offered that, and then a ticket to bet on the football games that night. That's awesome. And I was like, what the fuck is, is this a joke? I'd be high <laughs> like, yeah. all the time in prison like, yeah. and yeah. betting nonstop. Because yeah. like like uh, the guy from Blow, George Jung, doesn't he? Did you he, tell him? 
<laughs> well, doesn't oh, yeah. doesn't he say I went into prison and uh, you know with my bachelor and yeah, George Young was yeah. three cells and then down. He, he from left me. with his PhD in drugs. Yes. George Young was three cells down for me the whole time I was in prison. Really? Was, was he your boy? Yeah, he's in San Francisco now. He, he got, got out, out yeah, right? He got out last November. La- yeah, that's yeah. right. Last year yeah. he got out. So he was, and that it's crazy because like blows with my favorite movie my whole amazing life. movie. My I cried when he recorded movie, talking to his dad. My favorite movie ever. I like, bet it is. And <laughs> and then I, I got there and fucking all of a sudden fucking it's George. Did you know who he was? Yeah, obviously I was just like because there wasn't many Boston guys from there and he his and you have a number on your tag because mine was nine three seven eight four oh three eight and oh three eight means massachusetts and his had an oh three eight too and i started being like and someone was like it said oh three eight junk and i was just like is that and they're like oh yeah yeah he's a boston celebrity george. is he a celebrity in there boston george not really what you'd think i'd be kicking with him all what, the time what, what is a guy like that when he gets out what what happens he's he got, got money, money. saved in? oh yeah well he made tons of money off blow so he got, he got i thought you could make money off a criminal maybe he did though well, he had a Whatever. book. They, he, he had, had a book. Books. Everything. He's yeah. got fucking Good. websites where he sells shit. But he like, oh, wow. I literally watched because it was on FX a ton of times, and it was like one of those moments in your life. You're like I watched Blow next to him. You know, it's funny. Did, and did, did, the director did, did of that li- movie, who I knew, Ted Demi, died of a blow well, uh, when he was playing basketball. Thirty seven years old. Yeah. Thirty seven. Thirty seven years old. I had to call his two of his best friends and tell him. But um, yeah, he was playing did, basketball. So did class. George like the movie? Did he oh, think yeah, it was yeah, good? Yeah. Well, the depiction? movie. I mean, I don't want to talk shit, but the movie's like ass backwards. He didn't get sixty years; he got twenty. I mean, they like did a bunch of small shit. Small details. He's though. in prison for marijuana. He's not in prison for cocaine. Oh, really? The whole movie things happen backwards. He first did the cocaine, got caught with that. He uh, testified against Carlos Later, who played Diego Delgado in yeah. the movie. Testified against him, got off. Started selling weed, and they kind of said, fuck this guy, and they got him for the weed. Oh, wow. He kinda, so the whole thing, he, his, his sentence computation sheet, his thing, it doesn't say anything about cocaine. It's just trafficking marijuana. Wow. So he was in there. He got 20, I think 22 years, something. Does he, he have a 60. relationship with his daughter now? Do you yeah, know? she was there all the time. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Ah. <laughs> what a great Real ending, life. Though. Hey, yeah, no what shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they, you know, it's Hollywood. I mean, he was. We well, gotta just, make a good story. Yeah, they, it, it's, it's, it, but it fucking my still my favorite fucking movie ever. Ah, I mean, they're yes. my favorite. I love I that movie. Love it. Let's get some current events. Though. I love it. Let's man. mix up with some I, current events. Oh, that's so great. Now, did you send a lot of, like, mail from from prison? <laughs> Did you send like how would you guys you send mail? How yeah, I want to know the same thing. Like when you send mail, where you like, hey, can someone go to the post office? Because that took no, a lot of you, time. You yeah. got because <laughs> because like because for us, like it's I'm important. just saying, I was gonna it's important to explain because it like, too. No, <laughs> yeah, because. If you're sending mail, I would imagine. I hope you guys probably use stamps.com. You'd you? have yeah. to, right? I mean, or did you have Because it stresses me out because I'm worried I'm going to do some time. I'm like, I'm not, they're not going to get my letters. Right. I'm going to have to go to the post office. First of all, in jail, I'm, I'm, I'm printing out. I know the minute I'm doing it, I'm printing out U.S. postage from my laptop. That's what, that's what I like to do personally. 100%. If I'm running a business and I'm sending stuff you know, from prison or anywhere else, and I'm, I'm using my laptop. And I got a scale. Because, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but stamps.com will send you your own digital scale and up to $55 worth of postage, free postage. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can do everything literally from your desk. That's do you insane. have any more questions? <laughs> yeah. Stamps.com slash fighter. I mean, it, it saves you a lot of time. A yeah, lot of time. Because, because I have so much time. Come on, man. How about we give him a special offer? If you're listening what? and you're like, what? You're not doing prison time hold and on. you don't have time to go to the post office? Yeah. I'm going to give you a free offer. I mean, here. if you like, hold on. If you like getting in your car and driving to the post office and waiting in line, Ain't no some people time like for to that. do that. Because, you know, post office My man Stevie so Blue pretty. Eyes doesn't have time for that. Time is precious for Stevie precious. Blue Eyes. Time is I precious. Time to make up for. You time really do, man. Forget the post office. Go to stamps.com right now. Use promo code FIGHTER. This special offer, it's a four week trial plus a $110 bonus offer, including postage and a digital scale, Brian Ooh. Callen. Ooh, I like it's that. It's insane. Stamps.com, like enter FIGHTER. FIGHTER. What do you got, Ev? All right. First current event from the, this one came out over the weekend. A new app came out over the weekend called Rumbler. And it's basically Tinder for fighting. You can set up a, just a casual throwdown with someone in your area. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, just gonna honey dig, guys. I'm gonna take a picture oh, of me geez. looking all shitty, and then show up and just beat the shit out of people. <laughs> yeah, it's. Do you get money job. off of it? No. 
Well, first of all, a, someone's going to shut this down. <laughs> you obviously can't do a Fight Club <laughs> app. If someone's going to yeah. shut it down. Rumble. Defeats the purpose. Yeah. Right? I'd love to put Callan on there and see him getting some scraps. He's probably on there already. There's a good <laughs> chance he's on there. <laughs> just, in, just in a wife yeah. beater like this. Just His, me too. He goes by the him. name Nitro. He's all like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, everybody would be like, yes, yes. How's this going down? How's this even. How, how, how are they going to shut Rumble. it down? Rumble. It's That's, crazy. It sounds well, Rumbler. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some guys. No punching. Just wrestling. Hard wrestling. Gonna hold you down. Hard wrestling. Just in our shorts. Well, who's sorry about my bone? Who's gonna sign up for like how many guys are looking to get in a fight like a legal street? Oh, fight? I I bet this would do. You think it's so well? It? I don't think so. Who the fuck wants yeah, to do There are like, plenty of crazy idiots in this world. I think they just fight anyways. Evan has a good go point, but at least now, yeah. at least you know, you know, there's no like repercussions, kind of like Fight Club. You know, Where do you meet? Where do you meet? Just Wherever. somewhere in your the park. Your, you can't find in a park. Your bedroom. Bedroom. Your Cops are going to get you in a park. Your bedroom. Fight lasts a minute. Tops. Yeah. The living good room. point. Yeah, you could do it quick. Home Depot parking lot or something. Yeah. Not me. Wow, Rumble. That's insane. I want to check it out though. Just yeah, I kind of want to see it. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Stevie Blue Eyes do it, and then I'm gonna be his corner it, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Whatever you show up, and the guy's got a gun. He's like, "Hey, man, I said it was a gunfight." Well, what, what if you show up and you're like, "What the fuck? That's Nick Diaz." Yeah. <laughs> what the know, fuck? Right? Like, hey, what's sorry, Kane bro. I'm here? bored. Yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, Kimbo what's... Slice? It sure is. <laughs> yeah. Why do you have sponsors on your shorts? Sorry, bro. Trying to make some money here. Disaster. Well, little little twist to the story. They're all sponsored it, by Reebok. The whole yeah. this whole thing happened over the weekend, and then it turns out that this whole thing was fake. They made a fake app, and they had a fake concept, and they were just honey dicking everybody to see to, how many people signed up. To see how many people signed up, and to like showcase like their portfolio. It's like a company that like oh, wow. but we can create like cool. Fucking oh, okay. apps for Does it you. say how many people signed up or no? No, they didn't. They don't remember really yeah, yeah, yeah. They honey dicked a lot of people. They really did. I wanted, I feel Good like my them. brother would sign up for that bullshit <laughs> just to do it on the your weekends. Brother's your brother's like lying about his weight class on there. He just says he's like a buck 40. Oh, just comes up just like whooping people's ass. Stuff? Probably. They did. That That's insane, be, yeah. man. That Type marking. So, someone should have used that. I, Reebok could be behind that. Yeah, <laughs> they're just trying just to get something idea. right. They're all fuck, man. Who can we sell these fight kits to? Who the hell we do this with? What well, else you got? Up? That transitions perfectly into the second current event. Uh, so Ronaldo, the soccer star, who's of kind of fucking gigantic. Best if I could be anyone, I'd be him. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Too. So he owns a big sports and entertainment company, and. They've been doing business with the UFC for like literally a decade. I think they've worked with. Uh, quote me if I'm right, or correct me if I'm wrong. They, Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort, yep. Nogueras, Jose Aldo, yep. Dos Santos, all the all major all the major hitters. stars in Brazil. Wow. That's how I know them. That's all, I don't know the story. That's how I know these guys. He, they've officially completely severed ties with doing any UFC work because of the Reebok deal. Specifically Jeez. citing it as the reason they don't think it's fair. They don't agree with the, with the pay structure, wow. with the way they're doing sponsorships anymore. Good they're them. out. That's dope. Yeah. Wow. It, uh, I shouldn't say, well, it's a good stand, and hopefully the UFC takes notice. They have to notice, right? Yeah. They have yeah, to notice it's a terrible deal. But um, it sucks for the fighters because those you're talking about a lot of money, especially if Ronaldo's in it and Vitor, Bel Vitor Belfort makes hundreds of thousand dollars off sponsorship. Not anymore. Not anymore, son. How, I don't understand how if you're the UFC, you just see all these ducks falling, all this shit going wrong from that one point when they started this deal. You know what I think? How they don't have just you ever say, made a have you ever made a bad choice and just like you just kind of like fuck, yeah. and then that person who makes that horrible statement or that horrible deal, you got to ride you or gotta, die it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's how the UFC is, or the ego of Dana White is so big that he knows this deal is so fucked. It's just so hard to ignore. He was in you the airport and decked out Nike. Nikes, <laughs> full Nike. Oh Even God. he's like fuck. Yeah, like it's just I just don't understand how all this. Like, tell me a good thing that's happened. Name, I, 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 I would love to hear one Tell good me thing one me. good thing. Yeah, one I could tell thing. you 50 horrible things. It's tough. One man. good one. It's tough. That, and that's another sign. I don't, I'm sure, you know, obviously Dana White's not stupid, neither are Fertitas. And Fertitas are businessman to the bone. So I'm sure we'll see something out of this soon. You have to. Yeah. You have to. You what else that. you got to? All right. So we'll do one more. So Glamour Magazine announced their Women of the Year. And they gave it to Caitlyn Jenner and Hope Solo. <laughs> Well, two very odd choices. What first of all, they doing? first of all, first of all, you guys can go off about Caitlyn Jenner, but Hope Solo got busted for domestic violence, 
and even missed some games for it. Remember well, we that? We live in such yeah. a duplicitous world. We live in such a double standard world. It, we're so politically correct, and, we're, and people are going so out of the Get way to try count. to be incredibly progressive that it starts to lose sense. No, no, you, you know what it is. Me. You know what it is, though? You put Caitlyn Jenner on something, you're getting ratings, and we're talking about it. If they would have put True. Amy Schumer on it, do you even mention this? Nope. True. So you put Caitlyn Jenner on it, and now everyone's talking about how big but she used to be a man, and, and now so she's a woman. Harry Potter got me ready for this whole fiasco. Harry Potter. It's it's just it's yeah. tough, man. But it's like the ESPY too. Like the reason yeah, the ESPYs had all exactly. the because if you if the ESPY awards, whatever, it's a big deal. It's a way bigger deal if you got the Kardashians on red carpets in front row because yeah. they're. Dad, mom is getting an award. Yeah, it's just not genuine anymore. It's no, like it's, a, who, it's but just like, that's the thing though. It's yeah. gonna fuck him because society can smell bullshit. Yeah, well, Same I, with this Reebok. Yeah, yeah. Society think, can all smell all this bullshit. I also think we as human beings are programmed to respect accomplishment. So we are, we we are programmed to respect effort and intelligent effort that then yields great results. So when you see Serena Williams playing like tennis on that level you can't help but n just not respect the shit out of somebody who who dedicated their life to being so good at something and getting if recognized you, for yeah it. if you see somebody who writes an incredible book or makes an incredible movie or whatever it is you you just even when we're talking about drug dealers who when you realize the top guys and all the organization <clears throat> it takes instinctively you go it's a lot of effort you respect and a lot the of hustle skill. you yeah. respect the skill the effort the the the, the thought that goes into yeah, the it. kids call it the, the hustle. hustle yeah the go. effort and i think we're living in a time where you don't have to do that. And Rogan was talking about this, and it, the way he said it was, we live in a very odd time where if the lens is on you the longest, you get notoriety. Now, but, but I'll add something to that, which is this is the first time where the lens, you, the lens can rest on you longer than on someone who's accomplished something just by creating spectacle creating noise Headlines. creating something you know avant-garde yeah, yeah and and you know and that's how i feel about like when you look at bruce jenner who became caitlin jenner look you want to become a woman i'd be the last guy to so censor you and yeah. i would never make fun of anybody <clears throat> and i would never and, and, I, and i would always you support don't care it, it doesn't affect you yeah. we don't give it. a don't shit care. yeah but but the last time that guy accomplished anything was 39 30 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. 39 years ago, he won a gold medal. That's a big deal. That was 39 years Long ago. Yeah. And the rest of his time has been kind of a footnote. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, not much. And then he decides on. to be a woman. God bless. He probably had a woman inside of him the whole time. I get it. God yeah. knows what his struggle was and everything else. But is that who you give the award to? I don't know. It, like you said, there was a business decision. It put a lot of eyeballs on the event. People and I smell bullshit, that. though. People smell bullshit smell a little bullshit. bit. Yeah. It, it, it was what I was saying before. Where why? Because I'm a fair fucking minded person. Mm -hmm. I am. Like I am. I, I, since I was a kid, the last thing I ever wanted to do was hurt anybody's feelings. The last thing I ever wanted to do is make anybody feel marginalized. Way before it became uncool to call somebody a fag or whatever, I never used that word. Even as a kid, I just didn't want to make anybody who was gay feel bad. I didn't want it. I didn't want to make anybody who was different feel bad. I didn't like that because I felt like a bully. Because instinctively, I knew I was a white guy, and I already had. I was, born on, I was born on third base. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, and I always knew that, and it, yeah. it was ingrained in me as a kid from my parents and just my experience. Yeah, got it. So, but. It just bugged me, and I was like, why is this bothering me? Oh, I'm being forced into saying, this is amazing, amazing yeah. and she's the woman of the year. Fucking no, she's not. I agree. No, she's fucking not the woman yeah. of the year. Yeah, she's the Callie. farthest thing from the woman of the year. You know how many women have accomplished incredible things? Yes, how many exactly. women do shit for other people all the time? Yeah. How many teachers out there teach underprivileged children mm -hmm. and put their heart and soul in it every fucking day while they raise two kids of their own without a father around? Sure. How many How many of these people are out there? Talk to a cancer patient about his nurses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, there's so many classic examples. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel, the 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 president of Germany, who opened her borders to how many the five hundred thousand migrants, who who had the courage to do that in Europe. There's so many examples of women of the though, year, it? right? And we got to go. Well, Kayla Jenner's been peacocking it's for a solid fucking been a while eighteen months. Now. Shallow it's thinking. Like... Well, give that award to somebody who deserves it, not mm. somebody who had you know. 
Okay, great. Are you guys making a point? Are you making a stand on saying, hey, everybody, you're transgender, you, you, you're you awesome? If Is that what you're it's doing? It's tough, That's though, a be, separate thing. Well, when you say award, though, the, being on the cover of this magazine, is it that big of an award? And if you're in the magazine business, you want to sell magazines, and I put the German lady sure. who invited all these you know, immigrants. Angela Merkel, yeah. yeah. Who the fuck is, is that? that gonna not going to buy magazines? anything. It's well, tough. Sh- you look from a business it standpoint. now with Caitlyn Jenner. Why, why would I anybody? But I don't know anybody who's buying that shit. People now. do housewives. I, don't know, like, I see it all the time, dude. Sure. On planes, I travel so much, and I do these. You see little, magazines all the time. Bro, yeah. I, when I when I walk down the aisle, I see it. I'm You're sorry, out. it's women. Yeah. It's it's housewives. It's women, and they are all. They've got five of those magazines, and they just love uh, to read the gossip. And you know, maybe that's a female thing. I don't know. Yeah. I know it's politically incorrect. Go fuck yourself. It is. <laughs> and if that's the case, that's fine. Maybe they get something out of it. Maybe there's a, a, a evolutionary reason for it. But it's it's what pays the bills. It's for why sure. Kim Kardashian's app made her some crazy amount of money. A ton. Uh, yeah. You also so, hosted TMZ. But uh, uh, three what times. else were you saying, Evan? That was it. That's that was it. That's yeah. insane. Ooh. Uh, there's a big fight this week. Fight right? talk. Oh. But listen. I love fighting. You guys know this. Everyone loves fighting. You know what else that I love more than fighting? What? And Stevie Blue Eyes definitely loves more than fighting. What? Money. Yeah, I know. But the problem is, dude, when I'm watching a fight, I don't have time to make money. I got to watch the fight. You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. But, but you can go before. If you go to DraftKings.com. Wait a minute. Yeah, you go what? to DraftKings.com. Yeah. And you pick your favorite fighters who you think is going to win. You stand under the salary cap. You're going to make money. What do you but mean? But you got to know the fight game. Can't just be, you know, this rookie, this amateur. Know the fight game. Know the fight game, and then you bet on the fighters, and you can win money. That's right. Yeah, man. like two, two or three dollars or something like that. Nah, they gave out a billion dollars last oh, year. A million Go dollars, get you a million, no, one billion. Wait, Ryan. a thousand million? One billion. So if you think a million, dollars. you times it by a thousand, that's a billion. I'm talking Scrooge McDuck, DraftKings, one billion dollars. That's kind of crazy. It's yeah, crazy. Who's stealing all my clients and the betting it, man. Man. <laughs> That's it, dog. This is crazy. That's, this is crazy. <laughs> DraftKings.com. Enter promo code FIGHTER right now. Play this weekend for the headliner in Australia, Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holm. Right now, standard of the salary cap. Pick your favorites and make a ton of money make a ton. legally. Make yeah, a ton like, of money make legally. Is it, though? Legally. Is it, though? <laughs> DraftKings.com. Promo code FIGHTER. What do you got, Ev? Give us the main fights on this card. All right, we'll just roll through the main card real quick. Uh, first fight is up. Is it five fights? It is a five fight main card. Thank God. Do yes. we know before I, it's in Australia? Correct. What the fuck time is it playing here and what time is it out there? It's, it's playing nor- normal it's here. Normal time it's normal time here. here. What time you, is it out there? Because that's going to be a little afternoon. Factor. The main card will start at like day around ahead. 2 in the afternoon. Oh, there? Yeah. Yeah, They're two, 19 hours ahead. So they, they cater. To, to us. So, us like, so like if you there. fight in Japan, the, like yeah. the, the, you get to the arena at 6 a.m. You're warming up at 6, 7 a.m. So that Just arena, so the Americans can see it. Is that like, is the roof off? It's, it's roof gonna be, off. I think it's 80,000, so 70,000 fans. It's going to be sunny. Probably. And, uh, the, the, I'm sure they'll make I it cool. Like it's not sold out, though. I don't know. I mean, it's 70,000 to be the most people have ever had at a UFC event. If yeah, St. Like, Peter's the deal. It's not sold out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, not, not. about fighting in the sun. I don't like it. That's tough. No, During I'd the daytime. I'd rather have it be in the nighttime with fucking fireworks going off. They, they've like done it at night outside in uh, yeah. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. The fights that were, have never fights been good when the they day. travel that far. And when they do them outside at night or a different time, the fights are never good. What wow. else? You, what do you got, Ev? So first fight up, heavyweight fight, Stefan Struve, Jared Rochalt. That's on the main card. Oh, That's the, That kicks off the main card. Yeah. Wow. Struve versus Rochalt. Uh... Mm. That's you know, Rochalt's a guy, super high caliber wrestler, Oklahoma State. We all know this. All of his wins are by decision, or he's getting the finish via freaking. Uh, he, he loves uh, side control. He uses side control finish guys from there, like Josh Copeland. But he hasn't beat anyone. Anytime he's fought anyone decent, he's lost. So I, th- I see Struve winning this. I probably see Struve. If I'm picking, I think Struve, because Struve's more dangerous. If I'm Struve's coach, I say take more risk. He's gonna take you down. You're gonna take him down. Did he get You're over seven foot tall? His anxiety issue yet? Uh, that's the other thing. <laughs> that's the other. From, from what yeah. I know from Struve, I'm surprised he's still fighting, and not because of the anxiety, because of um, his heart issues. Not even heart issues. Just the, 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 does he want to do it? Right. Who did he beat I, I th- last? He, he he beat Nogueira. He beat Nogueira. Uh-huh. Yeah, it took him a long time. <laughs> took him a long time. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, God, you know what? That's a tough fight to call because I know where Struve's at mentally. I know Rochelle and his background. There's no quitting them. I think if the going gets rough, Struve will quit. 
Struve, if Struve can get a, if, the only way there's a finish is if Struve finishes him. Otherwise, you're gonna get a boring, b- 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 boring <laughs> Oklahoma State wrestling clinic for three rounds. Yeah. You know what? I can see Roshaw winning this in a boring decision. I changed in the middle of my. Thought. <laughs> <laughs> I like about it. See that I'm anxiety go thing myself. got you. Yeah. What else you got? Brian, you got Roshaw too. No, nah, I'm gonna go with Struve. I so, couldn't bet on I like Struve. Struve and I, I couldn't put tough. my eggs in that basket. No, I like no Struve and way. I and I um I, I want the best for him. I, I just I feel I feel he's kind of He's a hard. great guy. Yeah. He, Lex is out there. Lex is holding mitts for him. He yeah. Lex warmed him up. It's good. So that's, yeah, no, that's yeah, a good sign. I've met sign. him just once through you guys and I, I liked him. He seems like a very good nice dude. guy. Huge, yeah. great kid. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm rooting for him. He's still young. It's hard to be seven feet, but if he can use his height, who knows? There it is. All right, next fight. Is Uriah Hall Robert Whitaker? Didn't he fight I like, like a week Uriah ago? Uriah just fought. Yeah. So Uriah is filling in for Michael Bisbing, who pulled out and had oh, surgery, right. which was Whitaker Bisbing made no fucking sense. So for Bisbing, I work with Bisbing on UFC now. So for Bisbing to back out, one I was all about. Not that he backed out; he had surgery, got hurt, he had whatever. So yeah. he has bigger fights in the works, whether it's Anderson Silva or whoever it may be. But Anderson and Leota want to fight him. So Whitaker versus Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall finally has confidence, which he's kind of struggled with inside the octagon. Was it confidence or was it um, a lack of interest almost in in, in the game? Like I always definitely say, not interest. Okay. No, he's always been yeah. yeah. His confidence, 100%. confidence. So now his confidence, a big win over Musasi, and they still rank Musasi over him, which is insane. But um, I think Uriah with confidence is going to kick his face off. Oof. I got Uriah. That high. fight happened. Like I know it, but he, that just I happened. know, and he was like, "Put me right back in." I'm really yeah. looking forward to that, though. Isn't Whitaker think Uriah. kind of a similar Uriah athlete? Is... No, he's not. No. Uriah's on another level. Yeah, Uriah's is on another he's... level athlete. Okay. Whitaker, you know, Whitaker's tough, but it, you know, I think he's ranked 14 or something like that, maybe 15. But is, is Whitaker a striker first? Yes. Yes. That that, that that I feel like their skill level, striking wise, is very comparable. Oh no way! Really? God no! Really? That that that. Uriah, that, that well, may no. be the worst statement of well, the day. Well, hold on, but Uriah. <laughs> Besides but, Nitro, no, no. <laughs> Whitaker's tech. I'm saying technically. Whitaker is there with Uriah. Uriah just happens to be no faster way. and more no athletic. Way. Uriah is a free. I mean, Uriah is a technician stand up. Uriah has some of the best stand up in that division. Yeah, he's so tech. I always thought he was just. It was. It was more a function of the fact that he was so athletic, and that his fundamentals. You know, a lot of guys who matched his fundamentals. He's just that much faster, that much more athletic. No, he's super technical. Mm. I mean, black belt. He's been competing for a very long time. Wow. All right. Yeah. So you're going with Uriah? I got Uriah. I guess I'll go Uriah. with Uriah. Uriah. Nah. Same. You got Whitaker? Uh, yeah. You want to bet on this one? <laughs> yeah. $100. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Whitaker's got good hands. Uriah keeps his hands pretty low. For sure. Whitaker's, yes, he so, does. It's going to happen. Who was the last guy Whitaker fought? Was it um, Green? Didn't he knock out Ross Pearson? I can't remember. Anyway. I don't know. No. Oh, well. Moving on. Mark Hunt, Bigfoot, Silvertail. Ugh, Jesus I hate this Christ. fight. I fucking hate this I didn't fight. I know man. that was on this. I know I'm pissing why? on it. I hate this yeah. fight because. I hope they're doing cardio. Because in Antonio Bigfoot Silva was juiced to the gills last time they fought, and it was an epic, legendary fight. Goes a decision, right? Yeah. Then they call it no contest. And then we find out that he's on. He's juiced to the gills. So now everyone's expecting the same thing. It's not gonna. It's live not up gonna to that happen. Whatsoever. Someone's, gonna gonna be, yeah. Someone's gonna get finished. Someone's gonna get finished. And you look at Mark on his last fight. Good God! They should have just ended that on a high note. It sucks, man. Like, I agree. You don't, two, don't don't redo it. Do it again. Don't it's, redo there's it. There's no way that's gonna come anywhere close. I to agree, the first man. Fight. It's a and bummer. It's, it's a bummer when they do this. It's a super bummer. Yeah. Uh, if I yeah. Fuck, that's a t- you know that's the biggest toss up on the card. I, I gotta don't take know. Hunt. You are taking Hunt? I take Hunt. I'll take Hunt. It's just because I don't know what's going on hormonally with Bigfoot. Yeah. I don't know the got drug tr- commission though in Australia. I'm gonna take Bigfoot. I hate betting against Hunt. I fuck. He's one of my favorite fighters. I fucking hate. Is there any type Hunt. of elevation issue or anything in Australia? No, no. Is it just, sea, yeah, level. sea level. I gotta take Hunt. I think Hunt's got it. It is. You know that's Hunt, that that's a toss up. Mm. Yeah, I'm, who have, I just want a good fight. Yeah, that's a toss up. What else you got? I don't know why I said that. Uh, the Whitaker knocked out yeah, Pearson. Pearson but fights at 145. Weight class. Yeah. It was Pearson Brad, fights at 145. It was Brad Tavares. So I was just yeah. thinking of tough guys. I'm with you. Anywho, uh, next one co-main event: Joanna, Joanna Champion versus uh, Valerie. Move Lechana. on, Joanna. Did you see by murder? 
Rose by destroying what, her face. Shaved her head. Did you see that? Yeah, for ca- for that? cancer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I heard I heard did Paige she, I is gonna she do just it too. Said that it was in her way, and she's like, "This isn't a." See, I contest. thought I read somewhere she did it for cancer, but she was saying it was in the way during training. Yeah, I and heard this that. isn't a beauty contest. Yeah, that's what I so heard. she shaved yeah. her head. I think she. Cool. I think she also did. There's like a charity angle to it, also. But yeah. for Paige, it's definitely charity. She put up like a. Uh, Paige did it. Yeah. She, well, she hasn't done it yet. So if Ooh. if she gets to ten grand on her on her that's donation it? page, that's it. Hundred page. I'm mean, page yeah. is sexy Paige, as fuck. I mean, how do you spell got a lot her, of... her last name? Rose uh, Namajuna. Exactly. Right exactly how it sounds. Yeah. Namajuna. Damn, ten grand. That's ten grand in pages. Like... Do you know what she's at? Pages hair be gone. I have no idea. Mm. Well, that obviously Joanna's gonna just murk this girl. She there's no one even close to her. What else she got? She's so good. Fuck. Main event. Browsy home. Uh, I th- I. Th- <laughs> I think this fight will go longer than everyone expects. It won't be as fast as Ron has been finishing these girls. Holm has a f- high fight IQ, and her footwork is going to allow her to second, third round. But I think Ronda ends up uh, wobbling her with a huge punch and then finish her on the ground. Mm. Yeah, you can't. I mean, how do you bet against Ronda? No, it's silly. Because I heard that. Yeah, it's Talent just a question. Of, will, it, but, I mean, you know. for, for Holly to win, she'd have to keep Ronda from getting a hold of her yeah because there's nothing somebody at that level can do against somebody at the grappling level that ronda is right all i would say to holly you know holly has great footwork and she's a former boxing world champ so her footwork can buy her rounds in time you're hoping maybe you use great if i'm if i'm holly's coach i say use great footwork and and keep it like don't, almost play tag with those first two rounds yeah. get ronda super frustrated maybe we can open her up to something we haven't seen because ronda striking isn't technical it's very wild but she hits harder than any woman in the world you know what i'm saying so great people are gonna cry no oh, cyborg doesn't count she's never made the weight so the thing is is at ronda that weight class it's harder than any woman in the world but um if i'm if i'm holly's coach i say run around try and frustrate her and let's see what happens right but don't engage with her and for the first 15 minutes. It's going to be a shitty fight if you do that, but, I mean, what are you going to do? Run away! So, yeah, there you go. Stick and move. There's your DraftKings picks. DraftKings.com, enter promo code FIDA. You got to drop in knowledge for us, Brian I the Cowan do. Kid. I do. You know, before I do that, Brennan, we've, we've been very sponsor happy in this. Sponsor happy? I feel like we've been very sponsor happy, and we're always kind of cautious about, you know, how much we like to drop because you know nobody wants to listen to a lot of sponsors when we're doing our awesome podcast that's why we do them live so they're yeah. not reads yeah and not only that but you you know you and i always have discussions on whether or not the company we're gonna we're gonna talk we about. talk to all these companies before they even get close to yes. working with us yes anyways well um the company that i wanted to talk about is uh avant 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 um, and I'll explain to me what, what I mean by that. If you go to Avant, A-V-A-N-T dot com, right? Yeah. And you will find that essentially that's a place where you can borrow money from people who are willing to give it to you. And what do I mean by that? The Internet is creating a completely new um, – it's basically creating a whole new system by which people who have great ideas and want to start their own business and can't get a loan from a traditional bank can go to somebody Come out to there me. and find somebody. Exactly. Yeah, no, 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 a guy try, like Stevie yeah. Blue Eyes. Exactly. But if you don't know a Stevie Blue Eyes, <laughs> go to company like Avant. Well, listen, bottom line is it provides access to personal loans from $1,000 to $35,000 without ever stepping foot in a branch. Okay? You go to avantoffer.com, check your competitive rate, Checking your rate is risk-free with no effect on your FICO score. You complete your application in minutes, and the funds could be in your account as soon as tomorrow. Companies like this, especially Avant, who I've read about way before they became a sponsor, are actually changing not only the banking landscape. Banks are very worried about companies it's like this. It's hard to get a loan. It is. And this is and helping co- making and, and it easier. And they're helping small businesses, and they're having a positive effect on our economy, in my opinion, which is why I really appreciate them as a company. Avant will also give you a $50 Amazon.com gift card after you make your first payment on time. And for this offer, and to check your rate risk-free, go to AvantOffer.com, enter promo code FIGHTER, that's A-V-A-N-T, Offer.com, promo code FIGHTER, 
And uh, and there it is. Now I got to read this. Loans made by Web Bank funds are generally deposited via, via ACH for delivery. Next business day approved by 4:30 p.m. Central Time Monday through Friday. FICO is a registered trademark of Fair Isaac's Corporation. Amazon is not a sponsor of this promotion. Other restrictions apply. See website for details. Booyah! Avant. Avant. If you Promo are somebody, code FIDA. if you're somebody with an idea out there, get you your wanna, money. You want to make some money and create if you your can't own get on business, Shark Tank. Yep, right. They're out there. Avant. They're, this is uh, what the internet's uh, providing. It's What's exciting. this dropping knowledge count? Well, I had a, by Avant. Uh, well, well, I had a uh, Stevie in, in your jail. What percentage of the federal um, population in that prison, the biggest federal population, you think was black? Black. It was a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm. It, High 70s, maybe? Wow. 70s and more. What about Hispanic? That's not black, too? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I mean, like, I'm, maybe, all right, if I had to break it down on that, I'd say 50% black, 30% Hispanic, 20% white. Yeah. Not well, a lot of Asian guys in there? Not really. Not. What do you think the population of the United States, what pro- percentage of the population of the United States is black, African-American? Identifies as African-American. I'm not sure. 30%? 30%. Good guess. Don't look it up, Evan, or I'll kick your ass. I'd say low. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? 25, maybe? 25. So it's held steady for a long time, and I I looked it up, and it's about 12%, a little over 12%. 12%? Yeah. What? It has been for a long time. From from The rest is? The rest is, well, 63% of this population, give or take, between 63 and 67, are non-Hispanic white. Uh, that means, you know, Northern yeah, European yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then um, 17% or so are Hispanic. And the, the rest is like 5% is Asian Hispanic? and 5% that's Asian. And, they're, and then they're that's different. That's crazy. Groups. Yeah. I, it's surprising. I heard, I, I heard in, uh, I forget the time, but in a certain amount of time, a lot, like 50 years, 100 years, that Asian will be the majority. Well, they're only 5% or so of the population now. But Keely just looked up and got super excited about Keely that. Keely was like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they may they represent Asians may represent a tiny. There are very few people in, in jail who are Asian. Yeah, uh, but but it's really interesting because if you're black, even though you're 12 percent of the population, if you take that into account, you're three times as likely as getting arrested to get arrested. There are a lot of issues. Only three. I feel like it'd be way higher. Well, three times like higher. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I feel yeah. like it'd be higher. Well, yeah, but that's still that's still you know you're three times more likely. It's, yeah, that, that's true. You would think so. It should be higher. Yeah, because a lot of numbers. the neighborhoods are high crime areas and For you know sure. and yeah. all that stuff. But I just wanted to kind of drop that as a drop of knowledge because I was thinking about this prison population and to hear the discrepancy and disparity, and it's much smaller Small, than you think, yeah. which is really interesting. So you, in a way, you are a real minority in that yeah. sense. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. And at one point in the United States, black people, especially in the South, outnumbered white people uh, during the slave trade. Certain parts, huh? Yeah. So it's not a big dropping of knowledge, but I just want to put that in perspective when people start talking do about. You, so things. do you know the actual number in uh, prison? The what in how many are black? I used to know the actual number, but they make a disproportionate number yeah. of prisoners in um, in population, which to me means that something is wrong. Something is still not fixed. Oh yeah, and there are still great inequalities. And I think a lot of it it doesn't fall on the police. I think a lot of it falls on the legacy of this country the legacy of racism the legacy of slavery the legacy of of all that stuff these have long uh, repercussions it's just how they don't they don't prepare you at all for the hardest parts coming home of the whole thing and that's the thing you get prepared the least for i heard a statistic that three quarters of all black children are in single parent households mostly with their live with their just their mother really that's kind of crazy no, Think I about believe that. It, that that was a statistic. So, and by the way, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I I've read two statistics on that, and that was shocking to me. And that's why I, I double checked it. Now I might be wrong, but you know I read two pretty pretty uh you know it was pretty yeah it's, 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 it's up there. Sources. It's just like a you I know, don't and I should I, I do but sure I don't want I don't want to say them <laughs> I don't want to sure say them because I don't want to be wrong about it but I, because we're talking this way yeah but um that's a pretty good number and somebody correct me if I'm wrong that's crazy. No, because it's just the whole system. It's just made for you to go back because yeah. it's easier to go back than to leave that type of lifestyle and start a new one or start, you know, new opportunities. Yeah. You, you don't know anything but what you just came from. Yeah. And it's right. so much and easier. My, my feeling is that say, the way to solve it is to actually think about 
forget the black and the white thing. Like, what, what's what's going wrong? Let's be yeah. honest about it too. Mm-hmm. See, nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to be honest about the problem. What the fuck is the problem? Yeah. Is there a problem? Is there an issue with 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 certain aspects of ghetto culture, whether they're white or black? Let's talk about it. But you have to be mm-hmm. very careful in academic circles about saying anything that's fucking off color. Mm-hmm. Well, then what happens is you don't get to the bottom of the of the problem, man. It's true. Uh, listen, Stevie Blue Eyes, what if I told you back in the day when you were getting all meatheaded out, you could make money teaching people how to get in shape? Another talk. Yeah, Another one. Really? Can you hey, guys. That? Can, you <laughs> that? Can you imagine that? Making money. Making doing money. That. Insane, man. Taking your knowledge of getting of swole and, stuff and then making and money. Not really steroids, right just kind of working <laughs> out, though. Like, you mean you could be doing concentration curls or your knowledge of concentration? I want to peak my biceps. I want to peak out. You know how to get in shape, but yeah. you, you're, you don't know exactly what to do. You kind of want a degree. You know what I'm saying? Kind of want to get certified. Well, that's hard to do. What am I going to do? I'm, nah. I'm lifting weights. I don't have time. You go to NASM.com. That's what? National Academy of Sports Medicine. And your boy, Big Brown's certified. Well, before you go in, into this, when you work out, you know that knowledge, the difference between, there's a, actually a lot to know, right? I mean, yeah. there's a lot to work. I mean, how many, how many years did it take you to get this certificate? Must have been, you know, you know hundreds what? of hours, right? You would think, it not really. Like it. It's it's pretty easy, especially if you like to do it. Okay, so how, so so three years of study, obviously, then you had to go to grad school. Yeah. Nah, it was easy for me. I just signed up yeah. at nasm.com, nasm.com. Yeah. Registered, yeah. ordered the books, yeah. took the test, yeah. bam, son, and I studied. Books you gotta, for what? you gotta, you gotta apply to yourself. Books you know? are about thirty thousand dollars, thirty five thousand. You would for the think books. it's yeah. worth it. About thirty five thousand dollars. Thirty five thousand dollars. That would be fair intuition for the books that would, because that'd be worth yeah, it. Yeah, because I like yeah. my books. NASM certified. Involved. It's tough, man. Yeah. Go to NASM dot com right now and get certified make money as a personal trainer no boss you're your own boss at your own hours they also if guarantee you a job don't they, they guarantee you a job within the first six 60 months. days 60, 60 days? days pretty sure 60 days six. or six months six either way months. they guarantee you a job or your money back it's a great deal that's nasm.com n-a-s-m <laughs> dot com fan <laughs> questions fan <laughs> questions I'm about to freak out fan <laughs> questions fan questions fan questions <laughs> oh my god alright oh, right. first question <laughs> guys what are your go to brands to dress up on or to, to use to dress up on a night out also how do you tell a friend he dresses like shit without being a dick Hey, you go like this. Hey, you dress like shit, bro. What do you go to five four right clothing? Yeah, you you fucking like moron. Yeah. Go to five four club dot com I mean, and we, let them do the work yeah, for obviously you. Obviously, we love five four uh, club dot com. But uh, no, your your outfit. Where'd you get all the? Because you've really stepped your game up. And stop yeah. from five yeah. four. This isn't a pitch, but where'd you start buying Theory, your clothes at? Um, you I, like thirty? You like rag and bone? Rag and see, my problem with rag and bone. It's crazy. Expensive. It's too expensive. For like a shirt, it's no, like yeah. two hundred fifty dollars. I feel like it's a bad deal. Theory, James Purse. I I go to a couple people where where they where the clothes look good on me no matter what and that's what i just buy well you yeah know. if you clothing find one style that, shit you graduated from is. the v-necks and the yeah, jeans that he had on every he day for the, about the, 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 yeah. suit. the first half I'll a year i knew it. him the bruce wayne suit <laughs> i'll go back to it no um crazy. you know i like john barvados i like uh g uh, recently i've really been into g star obviously this is other than five four say jesus no g star um john barvados is always good oh, yeah. uh, listen i'll the, the for good stuff, it's expensive, you know, but it is what it is. If your friend dressed like shit, you th- I, I, people with no style, you think when they go out, they can look around and notice. If not, you don't have to be a dick about it, but just help them out a little bit. I, I'm not to, I swear I'm not pitching this, but I, I do think that now with the internet again, they cut out the middleman. So, like, like, like just a company like 54club.com, since they are a sponsor. It, it, just go to the website because you will see clothing. Not only is it really good quality, but I'm telling you that it's really good looking stuff. Yeah, good like, because yeah, they're up on the trends. So, you know, you're not going to look like an idiot, you know, yeah. and, and it's comfortable. I so. mean, anything affliction bedazzled, right? That's still yeah. Funny, right? Yeah. 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 Jersey Shore stuff. Some dudes yeah. like that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Not really anymore. I mean, it's tough. That's cool, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, I've been away right. for it's a little no, bit. It's weird thought... how <laughs> trends happen. How does it happen? Certain, you know what? Certain, but certain trends never go out of style. Yeah. Like camo, uh, yeah, old school classic one. rock looks, um, jeans, jean jacket, denim. It, 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 you know, it gets... But why, why, do, why do one day you show up and you're wearing joggers? I've never liked them. Oh, I and still wear joggers I know, all the time. But, but, but I mean, th- that became this thing where you cinch up at the ankle 
and you're wearing these you know, sneakers. You, a a lot like, of it, Kanye, what, you just cinch up at the ankle. You sh- you're showing off your shoes. Oh. I just don't like joggers because I feel like I'm in pajamas. Me too. I can you see that. feel like that? Like, if I'm out in joggers sometimes, I have a pair, and I'll just be like, I feel like I'm like, fuck. I, I can see that. I just crawled out of no, bed. I for street you. fighting yeah. kicks. But I, hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, it's tough. Man. Rogan came to me, came to my house. He's wearing the tightest jeans, and I was like, uh, "Good jeans." He goes, "Bro, these are barbell jeans. Oh, he they're elastic, stretch. they're stretchy so ones. stretchy." Yeah. And he's kicking and he's stretching. I was like, "Man, those are." But you know, really you know what the other thing is rump. though is like, and like fitter, slimmer clothes are in because I feel like baggy clothes it looks ridiculous. You look yeah, at people yeah. who wear super baggy clothes, yeah. it looks ridiculous. Yeah, like baggy jeans, super baggy shirts, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. So good All luck. Right. What else you got? Have? What do you think of GSP having a six-week training camp to see if he wants to come back? And if he does, should he fight Anderson? <sighs> Guys, you want to weigh in first? I mean, how old is GSP now? Probably 35. He's been away for, what, three years? Three years. I mean, he's just got that freak athlete in him that he could come back, I think, and not really have much of a problem. I think but he's just bored. Yeah. Why what would do you, you come do back? Because originally he was worried about – Head trauma. Head right? trauma. Yeah. And he's got head trauma. Mm-hmm. He definitely has some he's head trauma. He even said he's had head trauma. Yeah. yeah. And then he's going to come back and fight Anderson Silva. The 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 nostalgia, nostalgia of that fight's six gone. Years, it's gone. Six it's, years ago, that would have been the shit. I agree. You know, that would have been the best fight. Yeah. That would have been right up there with I, the, I just, I mean, He's just bored, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. he has money in the bank. Yeah. UFC's in a way worse position than when he left. When he yeah. left, it was the biggest it's ever That's been. That's interesting. Yeah. So now you have mm-hmm. Reebok. So he's an uh, Under Armour athlete, so then he's going to rock Reebok? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, I feel like he's going to do it. And if you're, do- just, if you're doing it, he's going to do it for sure because yeah. you don't test out. Like, if I announce on this, hey, I'm getting back to training, I might take a fight. No, I'm honey-dicking. Yeah, yeah. I'm literally in training camp. I'm going to take a fight. So it's obviously in his head. I don't know, man. I'm not feeling it. I love yeah, George, it's too. Just, it's, it's, and the game's changed. If mm-hmm. he goes in and he fights Anderson Silva, that makes sense. That's a good fight for him. Because it's not a It'll younger a huge guy with the new older know, guy. skills coming out. But if out. he goes in, he's fighting a guy like even Carlos Condit now, Johnny Hendricks, Lawler. Woodley, Lawler, Lawler yeah. Roy McDonald. Good luck. The game's completely yeah. changed since really? he left. Completely changed. And you would bet against him in those situations. I would. Really? Now, 100%. Huh. Who would you take him and Silva? Yeah, he beat Silva. Yeah, right. Oh, decision, five round decision. Silva's just not it, what he, he. He doesn't have that. You know what? Even their hey, even their heyday, if they're both in their primes, George beats them in a boring decision. Yeah, like you'll get built up Keeps like him down. like Mayweather Pacquiao, but yeah. we'd all be disappointed like Mayweather Pacquiao because yeah. he'd take him I down. Agree. He'd just keep taking him down. He'd do the chill zone and take him down. You're not going to submit George. He has phenomenal grappling, so I think wow. it's a bad fight. Oh. All right, next one, Brendan. I know for a while you were smoking some hookah. Question is, are you still smoking? And if so, what's your favorite flavor? You know, I stopped. I only did it for a week, and I got so many fan emails saying how bad it is. It's like I, I saw stats like smoking 100 cigarettes unfiltered. Whoa. How bad Whoa, it is for you? Yeah. They showed me all this research. Obviously, people sent me stuff pro. Thank the, you. Thank you, fans. Yeah, the most of it, I got rid of it. I actually threw it away. Yeah, I, don't, I don't use it anymore. I don't smoke anything. I mean, I'll like smoke weed sometimes before I go to bed. Yeah. If I'm having trouble sleep, but like just the whole smoking hookah and being around smoke, I hate that. It's rough. It's, like, it's rough. Oof. If I'm yeah. like at a party or the, it's something like that and it's there, I'm down. But if having it at home, no. I, I was embarrassed, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? What, am I, what the fuck are we doing? Right. <laughs> what else you got to have? All right. Uh, Brennan, which old school cartoons are you looking forward to sharing with your son? Oh, boy. Did your did your son watch any? Do you have kids, Stevie? Mm-mm. None, none, none that you know. Made it this far. Yeah. Made no. it this your, far. You, what's your kid watch? I don't even know what kids watch this day and age. Let's put on the uh, Simpsons. My kids watch um, the Simpsons. Uh, like the, the like like Despicable Me. Really? Aladdin. Um, oh, old all school. That not Dora Explorer, SpongeBob. Too young. They're, that's too young. That's very young. That's three years old. That's Dora two, the Explorers. Three. When they get to be four, five, six, seven, they're trying to get some the real Dora's shit done. The Jake and the Neverland Pirates, that's all gone. Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Oh, Never my heard son loved that. Really? So my daughter, they love Jake. But, so, and but the now they're into like Frozen. Yeah, that kind of stuff. They want a story. They want a real story. And Damn. they get it. Damn. And they start talking like the movie. And they learn a lot about social interaction. And they'll even manipulate you. Like, um, the, my daughter will sort of like pretend she's a princess in her room, and I'm the worst father in the world. I'm the tyrant. 
So you're the fourth father in the world. I never want to talk to you again. It's that thing that they like, bitch, hear. Bitch, you saying Cinderella? Right? Yeah. But they hear that, and that's how they relate to you. And suddenly what she's doing is playing a character. Or my son goes, he'll, he'll go, he's only four, and he goes, but I wanted some. And now I'm sad. And his body like hunts, cartoon, his like body <laughs> sags, <laughs> and he'll sit there and put his head down like that. And he's seen cartoons do that, and it's amazing because so he he's, he's a master. See, uh, I'm just going to be playing Mass Society all the time for my kids, so he doesn't think he's privileged, and he just starts talking ghetto as fuck. There you it's go. Gonna be dope. There you go. No, honestly, uh, I, they don't have any more, but uh, Tailspin, I used to love Tailspin, um, Gummy Bears, uh, Darkwing Duck, Looney Tunes. Didn't grow up with any of that stuff. I was overseas. We didn't have TV. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Didn't have any of it. No, no, your kid no. don't watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, he does. He likes that. Love that makes him violent. He picks up a sword and he's always going. Kaya, 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 yeah, I grew up stab. watching Baywatch. Yeah. And listen no to cartoons? Ra- no, not right. I watched Baywatch and listened to Rage Against the Machine. Ren and Stimpy? <laughs> Ended up a womanizing criminal. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. Ren and Stimpy. Uh, what else you got, Ev? That's great. All right. This Last one. one. Brian, I just did my first open mic and did pretty good, but bailed on a joke because I thought the room might take it too offensively. But looking Aww. back, I wish I would have told the joke. Do you think I should scratch a joke if it's too offensive? Never. I think the only way to scratch a joke is if, if you are – is it honest? Do you actually – are you doing it to be offensive or are you doing it because you think it's actually funny? And I don't like how offensive are you going to be? Why are you being offensive? Um, who are you being offensive to? You shouldn't be worried about hurting anyone's feelings, though, right? It's kind of what they sign up for. Um, like, you can't come to a comedy yeah. store and then get offended when a guy makes fun of females. Depends on the joke, but yeah, I mean, for me, I, I mean, if it's racist, it's racist. Yeah, but if it depends, but it, don't you think? Like, yeah, I do this joke. I mean, I've done jokes that are really edgy. Like, especially lately, I'm doing some stuff that where you know, it's like, whoa, you know, but. So, but but it's honest. It's a thought I've actually had. Yeah, if so you're if it's honest, a thought I've really had, they you like, chances are your audience has had it. Yeah, because some of my material is some of the, like horrible, horrible, dark things, but it has a truth to it, and I say it with a half smile on my face. Yeah, so and you actually kinda, think, and that it's like an actual ask. thing. Yeah, because like, and if. If you're just going out there to tell like sling around shock value jokes to try to, it, sure. you can see through it. You can sure. see through it's it. It's not gonna last long. You, right. You're not gonna connect with the audience. Sure. If it stand up, so much of it is just opening yourself up. Like that's why with me and all my stuff with you know my cancer bits yeah. and like prison bits and I, I'm not just throwing out cancer. I I had it. You know. Yeah. It's, it's it's so you can so relate to it. And they that's know it's why true. some people, some comics that make all these jokes where nothing's ever really happened to them. I look at them just like, yeah, have it happen to you. Then if you can make jokes about it, good for you. You did it. If you can make jokes about it when you're going through it, you earn the right to be able to go and make material. Boom. There you go. That's how I feel. Uh, Stevie Blue Eyes, if someone wants to watch you do this stand-up, where can we find you? I mean, I'm all over the place in L.A. Just Just all over. He just just showed up, man. He just just got here. showed up. Really? Knocked on Callan's door. What's your uh, off probation? I'm not mad at that. Doing? He took you under his wing. <laughs> what are did. we doing? You need a yeah, guy. Sa- I got a guy. He, I got a he guy. He saved my life, this guy. He really did. And I never really told him because whenever we hang out, it's just me and him and we're close and it might be kind of weird. Sure. But like now that you got a middleman now. Yeah, yeah, go he, ahead and tell him. When I met Brian last year, it was in Boston, all right? And it was, I'd been doing, I just got out of prison, you know, six, seven months before doing the stand up thing, but it wasn't going that well. You know, it's the it's beginning. It's a tough gig. It's a tough road. It still is to this day, obviously. And uh, I met Brian, and I was right at this point about to kind of go back into that life. You know, all the people I met in prison, all this yeah, stuff. network. Had a 10 times better network and thing going on. But for the first time in my life, I had a positive male influence who I didn't want to let down. And the thought of going back to that life, my other guys who I was, you know, connected with, they would be like, oh, Blue Eyes is doing this, like, blah, blah, blah. Sure. I felt like if Brian found out if I ever got pinched for something and went away, Brian would just be like, oh, like, disappointed. disappointed yeah, yeah, like, and that kept me focused That's good, for the man. first time in my life. I never had that. That's very flattering. And yeah, that's so cool. Brian... That's moving to me. I appreciate that. And from that day on, you can look. January, when I met Brian, we, you know, became friends. I just completely, phew, six months later, I was doing, you know, You've doing shows it. at the casinos. Doing, doing well, too. Doing big things. Nice, man. And... It's it's I oh like if I ever get an award for anything I'm not oh thank you Jesus I'm I, Brian Callen Brian, the Brian Callen. Callen's the first savior 
in my life. Damn, that's and dope. That's, 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 a, that. and that, that's very moving to me. I appreciate and you've, that. I've heard him say on podcasts before how he went out of his way to try to help people who got out of prison, how you tried to do that stuff and uh, make all these programs. And the guy was like, you know, there's nothing you can do. But in reality, you've done it. Mm. You're doing it now. Just being you and being the guy you are. So Boom. I can never say thank you enough, buddy. I oh, love that's it. That's awesome. Man. What a fucking great. That's a. That's very flattering, man. You I had no idea. I, you never know. <laughs> you, you never know you your should, impact. You should kiss each other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know your impact. We call him Harry Potter. Uh, I appreciate yeah, you. Can that. find awesome, me. So, I got. Yeah, uh, I got online. StevieBlueEyes.com on Instagram at Stevie underscore underscore Blue. My uh, Twitter is still at Protein Cream. Nice. I haven't got rid of that yet. I'm still rocking that. You're still ship. slanging that shit. I'm not, but I'm just. Gonna, I'm. Not, I can't kill it yet. It's like my little. We might baby. have to get into business with yeah, Steve. Yeah, we Come might have on, to man. start this thing up again. Yeah, we might have to start selling drugs. Uh, <laughs> uh, Cal and I. Well, you're listening to this uh, tonight. It's sold out, but uh, who yeah. knows? Still come up there. Uh, Tempe Improv in Arizona. The kid and myself will be the live firing the kid, and then following on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Brian the kid. Will be there by himself. Come see this guy slash the stage in stand up. San Antonio the weekend after that. Boom. LOL Comedy Club. Thanks, guys. Steve Lewis. Thank you, brother. Bring brother. your David Robinson yeah, jerseys to Callan and Tim Duncan, the Twin Towers. Uh, TFATK.com West Coast 2016 live tour is on sale right now. Uh, one night only in each city, one show San only. San Francisco, Portland, Seattle. Las Vegas, San Diego. Boom. You got it, yeah. son. They're yeah. they're going fast, so get your tickets now. Uh, there you go. TFATK.com. This is the Fire and the Kid. We're out.